Hi, welcome to their side. Welcome back. We haven't been around for a while. Today we've got a fascinating person that we're going to be talking to today, Mr. Dave Ross here. But I'm also joined by these two other blokes. I've got Rich Hyatt and Tony Hallam here to, in, to jump in and on the interview as well. Um, great to have you back in our company to be talking to people about skating and about their lives. So, Dave, welcome to their side. Thanks, Lucas. Good to be here. Excellent. I think. You think? <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff in the room that's oh, decorating this room at the moment is um, some of the paraphernalia that Dave's brought that relates to skateboarding, bands, punk stuff, and, and that's all part of his story, and we're yep. going to be talking about some of that today. First of all, Dave, before we get into that sort of stuff, yep. what can you tell us about Dave growing up, little Dave, me Dave? Little Dave. So I um, grew up in Heathmont, lived in Heathmont for about 21 years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we lived probably, um, probably the first memories are like, you know, every Saturday morning heading up to the shops where you'd save up all your pocket money and I'd buy a Hot Wheels car. You know, so by the end of six months, I had this big collection of Hot Wheels. So I think, you know, from the very early days, maybe I was always interested in collecting things and, you know, having sets of stuff, which kind of evolved into a little bit of a habit <laughs> um, later on. But yeah, a, a lot of it was actually time outdoors. So it was, the, you know, the 70s. So I was born in 64. You know, the, kid, the parents back in those days, wanted you out of the house so you'd be on your, your bike and the riding down on. Dandenong Creek yeah. and you know like we used to like before they developed the creek you, you could just basically go from one end of the creek to the other going under the tunnels you know with no torches and there'd be rats and all sorts of things flying around when you're like seven years old it was crazy yeah yes. we need a risk assessment before we send our children out now to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. how many tetanus shots do you yeah, think yeah, i've had exactly. yeah That's true. <laughs> so yeah so i was actually really involved in scouts so i was involved in oh, scouting for about nine years so um aaron there's a couple of photos one of the scout jamboree which i went to in 1977 that was at Rosamoyne Park at Roeville. Yep. Uh, my first live concert was there. I saw Old 55. Ooh. Yeah, Frankie J. Holden. And uh, it was pretty funny, actually, because um, Wilbur Wilde um, dropped his pants at, at, in the last song of the set. <laughs> in, <laughs> and he scout What's wrong with the There we go. With, um, oh, nice. Yeah, oh, with his, never no, that's, Wilbur. That's me. Oh, that's with the oh, stubby, stubby shorts. Don't say you wear a hairy high pants. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I reckon they're painted on. <laughs> Sprayed on, exactly. Like a pretty like it. It's a one yeah. Are they footy shorts? Nah, possibly. Maybe they're, you know. Hot pants? You, you, look, it wasn't the height of fashion, let's put it that way. They look, yeah. like, they look, like, <laughs> they look like 1977 Collingwood pants. Now, you, you, now a, you're talking. Are you a scout there or a cub? Uh, scout. Scout. Yeah, so my dad was actually a group leader. It was, it was pretty cool. I got to do lots of outdoor stuff with my dad. We went on Later we would go on, you know, five-day hikes together. Yeah, and awesome. yeah, he was quite involved in that way. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Pretty healthy kind of thing, I think, to do as kids. Yeah, and I, I think he was involved in it. So, you know, he had a natural meaning to then go and do it, you know, with his son. He was a group leader and scout leader and he was actively involved. So, yeah, up a lot of it's time made sense. Too, being a group leader and that sort of stuff. All the committee meetings and dealing with parents and yeah. all Not that sort of stuff. Not as these days, though. It'd be hideous these days. Uh, it's actually, it's oh. funny. Yeah, my partner's kids are in scouts and like Andy Young is the cub leader of my... Ah. Of so Maria's um, daughter, and and it's actually really funny. Like you know, it's it's probably more inclusive now because there are girls, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and and you know, there's people now identifying as different genders and all that. They've had to adapt and develop in it's, accordance. It's interesting. I got roped into being a scout leader for about three years, probably 2018 onwards, yeah. maybe 2017, and um, because my son was going there. But it's it is very inclusive. But but before it used to be the kind of thing where you'd go because your dad went or your cousins went or your brother went or something. But now I think it's a lot more of a place where young kids that have a lot of difficulty socialising yeah, get right. sent to yep. or, or go to. So there's lots of kids that have ASD that always have sort of, you know, on the autism spectrum that yeah. go there. Um, and it's interesting because you go there and you're like, you'll see lots of the kids and individually by themselves. You'll think, oh, something's not quite right here with this. But then yeah. all together, you don't notice. Yeah, it's like great a family. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's really good. So yes, yeah, so I went to um, Heathmont High School um, and then to or well, Heathmont Primary, then Heathmont High. There's a the photo there, Aaron, of 
Heathmont High School and the kind of hairdo I had when punk Ooh. broke. Uh, that's a funny one. Um, yeah, so we, we lived opposite this big um, bu- area of bushland, so snakes would come down our driveway oh, and so on. Yeah, so see if you can spot me, <laughs> spot me in there. Oh. This, is the, this is the year that punk broke, you know, John, Johnny Lydon and the Sex Pistols and so on. Oh, <laughs> Oh, look at this. Just got the full bowl head. Yeah. I reckon that was like... Everyone had a bowl head. Size four um, colander, actually, out of your mum's cupboard. (laughs) Got the biggest rice sieve, you know, you can can get your hands on. (laughs) Which one are you, except how big it is? On the left-hand side. Teacher. Yeah. Second row on the left. Ah, okay. There you go. Or or to your right, if you're looking at it, you know. So, um, yeah, so that was... Oh, yep, got it. So it's funny, actually, because, like, that's the same school that, like, Chris Hemsworth... And Liam Hemsworth ended up going okay. to so, and, and we were the first year of that school. So, it just there was portables. You know, every year they added on a class, they added on a few more buildings. <laughs> yeah, a few more portables. They, they built the actual. Um, That's what happens when you live over one Turner Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was on the other side. I was yeah. in Manhattan. Well, actually, yeah. So that what was great about that is that there was a Marlborough Primary School and Heathmont High School, and it was just concrete terrain. So when oh. I started skating at year, age ten. Like I had, you know, just all these um, hills and, you know, stairs and whatever to skate. It was fantastic. Have you ever bombed from Heathmont to One Turner Road? Absolutely. That's fast as that. Yeah, I've slammed. It's like... faster than Canterbury Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When they resurfaced it and oh. I was, I used to take my skateboard to work. I worked in the bank in, in um, Westback and Collins Street. And the one time I took my freestyle board, which was like the trucks were too loose, and I'm going down, I think I've got this, I've got, this, <laughs> you know, I've got the wobbles and... <laughs> wobbles and of death. And I had one, one business shirt and one pair of pants because I didn't want to pay. I wanted to spend money on going to gigs or whatever, yeah. <laughs> skateboard equipment. I didn't want to spend it on, you know, work, work units, work out so and, and, and I had to spend 50 bucks on a pair of pants. <laughs> Correct. You know what we all used Correct to do? Go to Aussie Disposals and get your camos. <laughs> <laughs> so, which brings us to when you started skating. So, you were about 10. How would yep. you get into it? Um, well, so my sisters had roller skates. In fact, this is a replica of my first skateboard, which I made. Um, it's, it's, that's what oh, that's wheat, awesome. wheat bix used to look like back in the day. <laughs> so, so my dad never used to let me use power tools, which at age 10, why would you? Yeah, well, you probably didn't have your, <laughs> you probably didn't have your badge for it. You didn't have your tool badge, so. That's right. You, yeah, you could kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, that's true, absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. So, but he used to let me use the saw and a hand drill, you know. So, oh, um, and he had heaps of spare offcuts of um, chipboards. So, I'd use the chipboard. It's and better then, than Bonite, that stuff. <laughs> Oh, these would just yeah. snap so easily. That's what I mean. And, and, and I'd have... <laughs> so the that's a myth. So that's, that's my sister's spell. like um, roller skates, right? And they, I had two sisters, which was great. So I had the double the number of trucks that I could go through. So when you didn't end up as someone on, with those knee boards then? With the knee boards? Yeah, double, oh, like double trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like 18 pairs. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Dave, explain, explain, explain how not, this works. So Lonnie Toft has got nothing on me. Oh, that's it. Explain how it works in terms of how you use the skateboard. So the funny thing is, they, well, so these <coughs> these don't turn, right? And so when you'd, I had a, a path going down the backyard that turned into the driveway, and I would roll down, and then I'd have to tack, 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 tack to get onto the driveway. And you do that like a hundred times and eventually you flat wheel the, yeah. the, the wheels the and, you, yeah, and you know when I'm scanning it is <clears throat> and then it's like, okay, next pair of roller skates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I did that and... Because um, you split the roller skate, right? In half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just yeah. pulls apart. You split it and screw it on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's how the first skateboards were built on, well, I'll, I can tell about that later, but on two by fours very rudimentary crude ones mm. and so my parents saw that I was interested and they then they got me a <coughs> Condor Charger upgrade which was a uh, yeah they were actually made in Melbourne by yeah. excuse me back to the audience um, yeah made in Moorabbin um, no not Moorabbin is it yeah, Moorabbin in time no Moorabbin Moorabbin yeah. yeah still yeah. going Condor Marine yep yeah and um, yeah I had they one. make that Condor Marine was the my the dad my dad worked yeah. next door to it in the yeah. factory next door to it yeah, basically. yeah they just pumping them out yeah yeah so, yeah, so that was my first commercial board. What um, year is that then? Uh, 76. 76 or 77. Yep. Yeah. 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 And so that was just like we had a driveway and I had two little curbs going out either side. So I just practiced, you know, just 
riding it up. So yeah, surf surf on style style. on the driveway. And they turn. Yeah. Those things turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was cool. Pretty yeah. Yeah. And then my first piece of proper skateboarding equipment was a, a Tracker X Track, and I, I bought it. I saved up months for this X Track. I was so excited. I took it to school, showed it to everyone, put it in the locker. One truck. One truck. That's all I could afford. I didn't have a board or wheel, so it was just it was so much money. And I put it in the locker, go back at the end of the day to get my bag. Bastard truck is gone. I had locked Another it. Another trucker. So someone had stolen it. Someone had somehow had a copy of the master key, whatever happened. How did Poz know that you were there? I didn't know for all that then. <laughs> so I was pure so yeah. So I think my first I know I had a Rodney Mullen freestyle board, which would be probably worth million dollars these days um, and I had a, a DHT fireball I think was probably was my first proper mm. pro deck were there other people that you met skating around that time Dave or was there a bit of a scene or yeah yeah so we skated um, none of wadding pipes was the first place there was mm-hmm. two places there was none of wadding pipes in the Dunny roofs in the Dunny roofs, yeah. there's, there's a picture of um, Dunny roofs there Aaron in the skateboarding folder um, which is now skater proof yeah, they've got these they? bars yeah. across. Yeah, yeah. 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 Instead of putting a fence around us, that we'd be getting up there. Oh, they're just it's unreal, mate. Yeah. Falling off that thing would be deadly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I asked this oh, question yeah. before what's yeah, the Dunny Roos because I had no idea. But 45 like, yeah. banks on oh. the top of the Dunnies. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I don't know, what were they, 35 degrees? Yeah, and they were concrete yeah. on top with no mm. platform. Yeah. And, and, like and a thin, thin ledge, like literally yeah. that wide on top. And um, people would stand up on this ledge waiting for their turn. Yeah, waiting for their turn. Oh, yeah. oh, on they're they're on a tiny little narrow ledge, yeah. So the way it was designed, they had two, they had a, a flat roof. It was actually angled towards the sun. So the idea is you had two banks. Yeah. And you had bars on either side with the men's and the women's. Yeah. And the idea is as the sun rose, the sun came in through those bars and lit up the toilet so they didn't have to ah, pay for electricity. That's pretty good. Yeah. So light up the, um, that was the whole premise behind it and there was I another like one in the worst part about it though was when you skated on it and hot air rises and people went into them and, came <laughs> and people would fall off and like you know like sparrows falling off the big, big, big job yeah, yeah. that, that's not a <laughs> especially wadding pipes yeah oh that's not a wadding yeah, pipe yeah. so that's rowan griffin yeah yep. um so imagine this right so we're skating three quarter section there yeah and the piece behind him which is just behind <clears> his, like his, his uh, back knee is mm. in half yeah so it's like three quarters a half Three quarters and went down and a half. Quarter. No, it was a half, half and then a quarter. Yeah, because we used to do airs yeah. out of the half into the quarter. That's right. It was, yeah, it was half, three yeah. quarters, half and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and it was Dunny Roo. Uh, Dunny, Dunny, Dunny Roo. Yeah, that was the one Roo. I. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. It's in and the it was, it's in the folder too. It was a replica of the Dunny Roo's and Dunny Wadding as well. So it was the Ringwood one. And there was a Mitchum one and one in Waverley. Yeah, Burwood. Not Dunny Wadding. No. Oh well, Mitchum and Dunny Wadding. It's the same. Same thing. Yeah, that's the same. So these are these are the two places when you first started. We this was this was the first skate park in Melbourne. Yeah, and the train line ran right past it, so you could just get off the Wadding station, come and skate. Really? How many times did you go past that and you'd lick the windows trying to work out who who was skating? Who's skating? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there was this guy Dave Ellison, right? He and this thing was so whippy. You'd be like. You that know, you'd thing, be yeah, 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 you'd be in and out like within a second. Yeah, he would he would rock and roll on the three quarter pipe. He dropped in on the three quarter pipe. He would do he'd grind it. Yeah, he did stuff it's and so, so nice. funny. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, he lives he still lives in Phillip Island. Does he? Yeah, Dave does. Yeah, yeah. and um and he had a photo in tracks and he goes, no, that was a bail. Like you, you won't own. Yeah. Goes, I, I remember seeing that photo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but um, but the best part about Dave is he's like Tony. His arsehole's, you know, two inches off the ground and the, his head's four inches off the ground. So you could skate it like it was a big pool. <laughs> That's a d- it was awesome. Oh, damn it, isn't it? <laughs> I still love that place. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was great. Yeah, you couldn't even touch the sides. <laughs> but that, I'd just go like that and I'd be hitting both sides. So David come to Ringwood and because when you're skating under wadding, you're going like, like this. You know, both sides because you've got to contort, and that's how he skated Ringwood. So Ringwood gave you more flexibility, but he was so it's still ingrained, cooped up, like, yeah. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. It's he reality. couldn't couldn't re- adapt his style. Well, the best part about Nutter Wadding was <coughs> if we had a comp at Melton, we used to go and train at Nutter Wadding. <laughs> yeah, right. And you'd do inverts and lay back airs in the, on the half pipe bit and airs and all that stuff, and you go to Melton, it felt like it was like a yeah, Grand Canyon. Yeah, yeah. So so good. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I stuffed out Melton. Yeah. yeah. Good fun. Where did you go from here with the skating tape? What, where did it go from here for you? Um, Ringwood. So Ringwood was built yeah. in 1980. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aaron, there's a photo of the opening day of Ringwood. So that was Milton. Milton. Ringwood had a, like a 13, it was at the end of Bedford Park. Mm. 
drive and it was um wasn't there a scout hall next yep. to a scout hall yeah, yeah next, in yeah. between a scout hall and a youth oh yeah there we go there it yeah. is there so that's actually both of it's really, they're really old the photos. Like, this is pre-graffiti. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. No graffiti, yeah. mate. And so that, that was hand. like a, so it was like a dish at, yeah. the, at the the back end, and then you had like a shallow I half call pipe. Call it a keyhole, though. Dog bone. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a keyhole. A dish. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like the um, the hat factory dish, except it didn't have the you know ledges. Um, and but the then half pipe was good. The half, well, no, it wasn't because it was. Yeah, think? It, no, no, half. No, first half was good. Yeah. The second half was the only person who could shred that thing was Rich. Like it was, it, was, it was so it was so kinked. I did a couple of times. Oh, it was nuts. Oh, it was just you had to, you had to take rapper. it on an angle. If you took yeah. it, if you took it like going straight up and down, it'd be. Oh no, you yeah, couldn't. Yeah. You had to yeah. line along it. You had to yeah. line along the yeah. speed. You know, yeah. I worked out actually with um, Ringwood because it was so badly kinked. You had to draw really long lines in it. But okay. the the best trucks I used were the Aussie trucks with the plastic base plates. In and there, they, and it, yeah, really? and it absorbed the absorb the bumps it's amazing. so you didn't oh, get wow. it straight no. through to your feet bit of flex no they were they were ace I, I rode them for a while okay, yeah, okay. And, and you know that you know um, Clint filmed a high sea ad there yeah 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 he's high sea. Well, he grew up in Bayswater so he grew yeah. up in the lot next of, suburb a lot of commercials were filmed mm, okay. there at that time yeah. Yeah. and he's well, not long ago we were talking about that commercial he said they built over the bowl a scaffold over the entire bowl for the ad so they could film yeah. it yeah, yeah really yeah. wow that would be a good photo that would be huge wow yeah and, and, and what was the bowl like? At least 20, 30, 25 foot across, right? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty big. It was well, massive, well, lip yeah. To lip, it was pretty yeah. big. And, like, and every side was different. Like, oh, yeah, it was, you know, one was banked, like one, yeah. the, the right side was banked and the left side was steep as buggery. And the middle section was probably like nearly two foot of vert. I yeah, think. and a bit of oververt in one side. Am I wrong? But I think for me, because I'm goofy and Dave's goofy and you guys are both natural, but coming in. Oh, come on. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Um, that this hip here coming out of the bowl where Mickey Mouse was the best hip, right? This hip, this side. Yeah, coming out on the. Goof, <laughs> yeah, coming yeah. on, coming over front side. Yeah, that yeah. was the best hip in the no, bowl. Yeah, no, no, only two to choose from. This one was steeper. I remember. What, so you reckon if you're going down the guts, that the the right hand side hip was the better hip? That's what I remember. No, coming out, that of, was the coming out of it, the right one is the better. Right in terms of riding over it, was a better. Yeah, hip that was the that was the best one, but the raddest one was the left hip, and if you could work the line out into that. And I did, tried to do it for years, and I finally could get tail taps on it and big grinds and stuff, thinking, shit, this is unreal. And then apparently Chris Miller came and did the first carve through the joint backside and ollied the whole thing. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's it was unreal to hear. Like, you just can't. I, I heard it was around. So it was like, it was just yeah. square to the bottom, and you just had no chance of absorbing it. Well, apparently when he came for that, he was skating Vermont, and no one knew about it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was trying to skate it. So I just realised before Ringwood, there was um, a mate's place in Heathmont, and he had a quarter pipe. Yep. Um, in Mick Harris and his, and his brother Ian, and there was a, a mate on the other side of his house, John Elliott, um, and then David Sikadik lived on the corner of Maybe the court. Him. Yeah, mm. and so me and John and Mick and David, we always skated like Ringwood. That we were like there together. That was and, then, and there's a photo yeah. Aaron of the opening day, oh. and, and the Ringwood Mail actually turned up, and um, we thought, oh, the the <laughs> the newspapers here, we'd better do something pretty special. So we go, okay. Let's drop in the deep end. Oh, no. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Wait, not... shit, you're both all crashing into it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the article here. I'm not sure if it's, um, wait till it gets minimised. <laughs> it's a downhill run. It's what a great cap. Dangerous skateboarders. So, that's, that's David Sigidic on the left. Yep. That's me with my DHD fireball. Nice. And, and um, blue cryptos on the, the right with a funny shirt. And I slam so bad on the other oh, side. Oh, really? In front of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Total hipper, and then there's another photo that the guy from the mail took because I got all the runs, all the yeah. um, proofs. Of two guys out the side of me. <laughs> 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 Never made the cut from the yeah. So, so, so that's Dave. That's Dave who had the crypto board that I was telling you about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I used to yeah, stay with him. Oh, he he ripped. <clears throat> yeah, he ripped. He was so yeah. good. He didn't skate for long, but he he really? shredded that. You no, know, we had we had a, him and I had a day at Ringwood. Where we had a rule that you were allowed to have one push from the top and you had to try and grind. So it really taught us to extend our pump and pump. really yeah, how to yeah. go for it. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it was a bit curvy there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah, we, I remember that. Like, we were going, right here, we're going to try this and see one push and see who can hit it. When Took we started going out there, there was a lot of BMXs riding it. Yeah, mega. And there was the, 
the uh, the light in the deep end. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Which um, was twelve foot above the bowl. Like a which pool, was, was it? Oh, just, just, yeah, it was like they yeah, installed like it more later for on. Safety if people walking through the park. Like oh, yeah. okay. Right. I know. So you could skate it at night. You could skate it at night. Right? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'd up the whole place. It was twelve yeah. foot high. That was twelve foot, 12 yeah. foot so above the bowl. These guys on BMXs. Mm. I remember seeing a guy air out. Yeah. Like, they're like as high as the, as high as the light. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah Matt. Really? There was a young kid, Matt, that did do it, and he. We knocked. Yeah, we knocked the fence down. He only had tough wheels on, and we knocked the fence down, and he'd go up. And just do the biggest tabletop, and he did it for ages and was ripping. And um, then one day he blew his tires out on the way back in and just took the whole side of his face off right through to the bone. It was yeah. gnarly. Oh, ass. Man, and I never saw him again after that. I'm not surprised. And I'd, someone gave him a skate. I think it was um, someone gave him a skateboard, and he took it and sold it for BMX parts because he used to borrow our skates all the time. <laughs> it was so funny. I can't remember who gave it to him, but someone goes, oh, "I remember giving him a skateboard." I, I broke my tooth doing frontside airs in the, the oh. deep end of the bowl. Yeah, only only last year, sixteen thousand dollars of like oh. implants to get it finally done. I'd knock it out for cheaper than that. For <laughs> <laughs> so you had yeah. all your teeth fixed last year. For well, it. no, I had bridge work, and then yeah. you, know, you have a plate, then you have bridge work, and then the bridge work, you know, okay. only lasts oh, so long. Bridge. So then implants. So yeah, so yeah. So it's ring, ring, lights, with, ring with legacy, just you know, look good, oh, mate. Right there. Um. <laughs> Who was your inspiration back in these days? Who, who were you looking up to? Where were you getting information on skating? You know, how were you getting pumped? What were you? Well, yeah, so you would remember, so what would happen is you'd be, as a local, you'd be skating Ringwood and then, you know, people like Noel would turn up or Johnny McGrath turned up one day and, um, you know, I, I told John, you know, you were the first guy who did a graffiti in the... In the ringwood bowl, I was like, no, 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 that wasn't me. I remember it. You what went are you to write? Plug jam. And plug I'm still jam. to this. And I asked him, what does plug jam mean? He said, I've got no idea. So, <laughs> so there were those guys. Um, Biff Murdoch. Yep. Yeah. Um, came in. Yeah. So, and, and, and Clint, you know, yeah. he was amazing. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. Still had just such Robbie a. Robbie Ogner. Dilly. Um, Robbie Ogner. Simon. Billy. Simon. Well, this is the interesting thing. So, and I love this about, you know, how skateboarding's evolved in the scene now. So back in the day, there was Dovton, right? So Dovton happened after Nana Wadding and then Ringwood came a year or so after. And, and there was a Dovton crew of all the people who lived in Danny Long and around that area. And because none of us drove, except if you're a bit older, mm. you know, you got the train everywhere. So it'd be like a massive trek to get, mm. you know, and I yeah, used to get the train to, to Morty Alley just so I could go and have a look at Morty's surf shop and, or surf dog yeah, and yeah, ski yeah. in the city. I didn't yeah. have any money. I just wanted to Liquid idolize windows. and yeah. see, you yeah. know, it's yeah. like looking through the Bell Surf catalog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the local guys would come, <coughs> um, yeah, some guys would come down from Sydney sometimes and they could just do things that you didn't even think were possible yeah yeah, yeah yeah it was right really up. cool which kind of made you want to do more i guess kind of yeah but this is the thing I, i've i was always an average skater and even now you know still pretty average can't do couldn't do big airs or hand plants i can't even ollie you know that sort of stuff so it's like for me it wasn't about how good i was it's always been about the joy mm. of yeah, rolling okay. you know the fun of it. and so you know after all this like tony and mark paul and i we used to like skate in the city every weekend and it wasn't about you know like t- tony you probably turned pro after that but it like it wasn't you know everyone's like oh tony helm tony yeah he's my mate and mm. i didn't think i never thought of you as a pro skater it was like tony i thought he was tony a pro person. but not a pro skater he was just a pro <laughs> Yeah, so it's... Um, when did you guys meet then? Probably not long after you moved from New Zealand. Yeah, right? yeah. 81, probably at yeah. Mountain or somewhere. Mm. No, no, I reckon the first time that we met was at, at the Collingwood. 83. I never skated Collingwood. Didn't you? Oh, I, I met you at Collingwood. Collingwood. Yeah, yeah. So I reckon 83. Yeah. Because I was, I was playing, I mean, we're winding the clock. Oh, you know what it would have been? At a poncho? Possibly. No, we, we, we must, we no, must have met skating. Surely before Cause, that. Because what I remember, right, is when was the first Thrasher came out that was the newspaper? Remember there was two that were like newspapers? 81. Yeah. 81, right? Yeah. Now, we were skating Poz's ramp. Was that there in 81? Oh, Because right. we were sitting up on top okay. of it, and I can remember rowing, rowing <laughs> and, Poz, and Poz had his saxophone. <laughs> and, right, and, and, they, and, and, like and they had this... I don't remember no, this. Because we had this rant, because they were... Everyone had a saxophone. Thrasher. It was doing <laughs> a saxophone. So they were looking at Thrasher, and I think it had 
I think it had the Whittier cover on it. I could be wrong. Oh yeah, but Dwayne. Yeah, right with Dwayne, He's right? right. And, side, and, yeah. and 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 Poz is there, and Rowan's sitting up the top, and they always used to sing songs, and they had this song called "Pigging Out on Fish and Chips," because at the <laughs> end of Poz's right. street was a fish and chip shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and we were looking at that mag, <laughs> and it had just like so. It was probably eighty three because it was eighty one. It came out, but we probably got it in eighty three because the pigeons weren't flying too. Yeah, good. there was a big four hundred twenty meat pie out on the thing, and, and we, we sprayed <laughs> meat is murder. On the, <laughs> yeah, right. On the corner, it's like he used to walk past it every day. So if ever he got busted, <laughs> so <laughs> funny though. Like they were so fun times over there. Like, there's hilarious. actually a photo of um, Paul's ramp um, in the. Skateboarding folder Paul there. Who? Um, Paul Posma. So Paul and oh, I Paul's dead, no. um, yeah, started Paul's perfect transition. It was called the yep. sap ramp. Yeah, it was called the sap ramp. It's a drip sap from the trees. Oh, the okay. It's under a pine tree, tree right yeah, next yeah. to yeah. it, and it overhung. And so you you could only skate one side of it because the other side was so. There we go. So that's yeah, my old El, Elgato board. Okay, yep. Yeah. I guess same same pair of shorts. Is that a fly's eye? I haven't seen that. You've got your money's worth out of those shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, right. they're, and they're, the, they're the red um, bones cu- mini cubes. No, they're not. No, huh? no, no. So they, this was a, a pack. So this was the black Variflex Elgato, and yeah. it came with Challenger trucks and C3 wheels. Oh, C3s, that's yeah. right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I tried. I tried getting one of those when I started skateboard collecting yeah. last year, and um, Tony was involved, and it was like twenty three hundred just for, even for the wrong colour board. I and don't that, have one. I was gonna give it to David. That, and, and that's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. there's I'm no way. Anyway, <coughs> they were way. awesome. They were such a good board. Those Elgato's. I, I had three of them. I loved them. And that's where the bonut idea came from from these guys. Yeah. So from Reflex did it first. Okay. Yeah. Like back yep. in eighty one. Yep. 8081, they were using bonite on the base and on the top mm-hmm. to protect the, and also in the middle as well. And, and the yeah. concave yeah. went through to the tail, and you, they yeah. used to rock when yeah. you go to elevate, they'd rock on the yeah. tail. Very flexible. Pretty good. So this was Poz's, Poz's ramp. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How big was it? Eight foot high? Eight, eight foot high? Okay. Eight or nine, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two vert or a bit of vert? Oh, six inches. Maybe <laughs> half inch, yeah, yeah, half a foot, I mean. You could air yeah. it. You could do yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you could so, definitely on do it. On the side, Dave's doing the, the, the wheeler on you. The good yeah. side. Yeah, the good side. side. Yeah. yeah, the, the back side. Yeah. Was that the same, side. around the same time you were skating Clinton's? Clinton's ramp? Around about Clayton's that. ramp, yeah. Clayton's, yeah, yeah, sorry. so Clayton's. that ramp was an East Key law. Mm. Yeah. And this, That's miles away. Tony right? was a bit well, of a... Not, not, oh, not, not for you. Not for us, yeah, Tony was a bit of a stealthy. He wouldn't tell you about a few things. Oh, no, you know what it was, man? It's it's not much being stealth. It's more about... They've asked you to keep it quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that was so a lot of that, that going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You, you know, yeah. Same with the backyard pool rule. You don't blow a backyard pool location. Ah, no way. You just yeah. keep that. Yeah, Rob Reginato, was, his ramp was off limits for a lot of people. Oh, the Woodstock one. I yeah. never Hill brothers. Yeah. I never ever got against yeah, those. Yeah. I hated that. You know, for me, skating has always been this inclusive oh. thing. So mm-hmm. as soon as I get a sniff about we're doing this and you're not included, it's like... They, they, that's mm, why that's, that's why I hated about. the hills because they just would not let you use anything they had, you know, and they were just so it was crap. Yeah, you know, I remember the uh, when we had the thing at Festival Hall and I wasn't even allowed to get in, and everyone else was practicing, and I'm just standing out looking at the joint. And I got in, paid my twenty five bucks entry or whatever it was, <laughs> and sat next yeah. to your mum and said, "I'm leaving." <laughs> and then, then Steve and I both had a, a, a run, and that was it, and we just went down and shredded Morty. Was before it had the steel on it. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of stuff going on there politically, man. Hell yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But I think that's yeah. why also punk rock music like appealed to me because there's a this sort of idea of equality. It's an idea. It's not mm. lived out in practice. But yeah, it's yeah. This idea that you know you're all in it together and mm. yeah. you know there's no hierarchy or no one's better than anyone else. You know, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. I've always aspired to that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah very yeah. democratic. Kind but early of. on, though, skating and punk were really. Similar in that sense. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, plus we were Black we Sheep. Yeah, early yeah. on, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 and during, during the time, probably when I met Dave, when I came to Australia and met Richie as well, like, and a lot of, you know, Mark and Poss mm. and our small crew, um, it was so underground, it was dead. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, skating, was, yeah. Oh, you'd be yeah. on a bus, like Richie said before, you go past another wedding and go, who's skating? Yeah. We're getting off. Yeah. Because the next stop is Ringwood. You either yeah. see someone skating at Nunna Whiting and get off, or yep. you go to Ringwood, someone will be skating there for yep. sure. Yep. Yep. I remember being on a bus in the city one time, and I'm probably with Zarafra or someone, and we, we're riding in the bus, and like, skateboarder. Yeah. We're getting off. We're going to find out where he skates. Yeah, chase him down. Got to meet him. Yeah. 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 And because there are so few, so far few, between. Yeah. Like, now it's just crazy, it's everywhere. Because often they would have, like, 
their own scene going so you could grow your scene by a couple yeah. of people yeah. 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 they could keep them you keep them going but they haven't joined your scene yeah and the way we do it every week we'd meet at Flinders Street Station yeah. yeah it was yeah. Yeah. on the steps see you at 8 o'clock at 9 o'clock we're going to go skating because yeah. there, there was no start. internet there were no mobile phones no, phone calls didn't work in your <coughs> house. yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, we were, and we would had some serious sessions. Like, mm. there's a photo, um, Aaron in the city square. Like we used to hit the city square, and before it is what it is now, which is like essentially going to be a train station stop, I think. Um, there were like these massive ledges you could do acid drops off. There were stairs. Mm. Uh, it was awesome. Well, well, you know where you see it on TV, the 60 Minutes thing, and Lee Ralph's. You know, there's that thing where they go, there's more. Where some of the reporter goes, there's more acid than drop. And yeah. Lee's actually aciding off that thing. Dave's on there. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. yeah. And Lee eats it off there, and that's that's. Oh that's yeah, the yeah, old city that, square. Yeah. yeah, either you're on your Lester. There's my Lester. So there's my Lester Kasai. This is. Like, oh nice. Is that the actual board? No, nah, no. Nah, I bought this off Andrew McKenzie. Um, uh, again, so this good is when I started to get the it's '80s boards, still. and then. Yeah, that's because he shrink wrapped it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no NOS and shrink wrap. E- yeah. e- it's straight off eBay, straight off eBay. <laughs> but, um, but those city, those days in the city, Dave, they were just so good. That was awesome. So Tony and Mark had come out from Faulkner and we'd all catch the train in from Ringwood. And, you know, we'd skate them and then... No um, one would bother you. Because the city was shut on the weekend. It was just days. No one in the city. Yeah. Yeah. No one in there. 12, 12 o'clock yeah. Saturday, what, it was done. What year is this? That's 80... Because I've got a, I've got a homemade suicidal tendencies mm. shirt on. Um, Colin Brown came over in '84 from having seen suicidals in LA, and I bought their record of Missing Link. And I was actually doing PBS radio shows for about four or five years, punk rock shows. Okay. And um, yeah, so I was the first Pope person to play like suicidal tendencies Ooh. and so on, and we're just right into that. And that's how I know. And plus the haircut. <laughs> it times you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we were hitting on pause before. We briefly yeah. touched on Perfect Transition. Yeah. Tell us about Perfect Transition, how that came about. Alrighty. So, um, we thought at the time it was Australia's first skateboard magazine, and then we only found out last year we were wrong. Um, <laughs> but it is the first skateboard magazine of the modern era. So, there was one issue in of a magazine that was done in Sydney by a guy who came out from America, I think, and ended up bound to be a pedophile or something. Yeah, PD file, he made a good magazine. Yeah. Uh, and then, that that, then, then there was... Oh, I can't remember. The 70s one? I'm not sure. That, um, so this guy, Jim Turvey, so this is a funny story about me and Paz. <laughs> we hadn't connected since 86, mm. like when I went overseas. And, and this guy from Newcastle, Jim Turvey, got in touch with me and saying, I'm, I collect skateboard magazines, especially Australian ones. I'm doing a book on Australian magazines. I'd love for you to guys to, you know, be a part of it. So we... We eventually got on a phone call and that was the first time Poz and I had actually like verbally communicated in 35 years and we're just like bouncing off each other like this and laughing and carrying on Mm. and that guy can't believe it. I said, you do realise like you're the one who's connected us like all these years later. It's like, but it's like you guys live together. Yeah. yeah, It's just like there's that camaraderie. Yeah, it's really cool. So anyway, we... Good side of a friendship, that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's timeless, well, isn't it? And I remember saying to him, like, the magazine was an extension of our friendship. Yep. Like, you know, our humour is just littered all throughout this. Yep. We didn't take anything seriously. We had a, um, we had a, a column called... called the magazine Dom. is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was like hand... hand, hand <laughs> drawing, drawing. It's like, I printed these off at Westpac, where I used to work at Westpac. And <laughs> Thanks, Collins Westpac. Yeah. After, <laughs> after hours. Yeah. And um, it's pretty amazing. Some of the connections and people, like Gail Austin, for example, who had um, surf Good Time shop. Skates yeah. in, or Good Time Surf Shop in Brisbane, like now I've got a Good Time board and I contacted her and she's going to send me the graphics for it. Yeah, cool. And I said, do you realise that 35 years ago you were selling my magazine for 50 cents and not making a profit? And then you know, people like Robert Brasher are mentioned in there and so on. But um, we had Richard Black, Blackhead, which was a, a piss take of um, Rick Blackheart, Blackheart. Yeah. Um, and I ended up going, I ended up going to the Thrasher offices in '86 because I did an interview with them when I was over there, and and, <laughs> and Rick Blackheart said, he said, "Ah, oh, so you're Doctor Blackhead." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long would it take you and Pause to put one of these out? Not very long. <laughs> not very long. <laughs> Although, no, just basic. looking at the hand typing, probably longer than you reckon. I reckon. 
That, that was yeah, amazing yeah, was how, yeah. how productive we were. The old yeah, like, ground fox could I was playing in a band, I was doing radio shows, yeah. I was working, I was, you know, putting out a music fanzine, I was doing this, I was corresponding with people all around the world. It was just skating, it was just a passion. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. And yeah. um, <coughs> Pos this credit, like I went overseas, I, I was actively involved in the first three issues. So the yeah. second one was um, Greg Jarman, who was a pen pal of mine in um, New Zealand, and that's the uh, Hamilton Bowl mm -hmm. in New Zealand. And, and the back cover is actually me skating the old um, those, the wave, those wave yeah. pipes yeah, at the, the Art Centre. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they were fun. Um, we've got to talk about car parks too, we can't forget oh, car man. parks. Um, and then the third issue, we actually went... We Colour. Go. Colour. Crazy. Look at that. Rob Reginato at um, Cryo. Print, printing Cryo. had come a long way. John, yeah. John standing on the board, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And then, um, yeah, so Paul ended up doing it, and to his credit, you know, he ended up getting... How um, many um, issues would you make of them? Gloss. Oh, the first one was to about 200. Yeah. Second one was a few more. What, what would happen is, so Paul... Paul, he worked in a printer's in, in um, Cran, right? And he would knock off for the day, but leave the window tweaked open. Oh. And so, you know, after, after everyone had gone home, he'd be climbing on, hoisting himself into the printer shop, start up the machines, and he'd be printing, like, with perfect transitions, stickers for... We had our own really? handmade stickers. That's, so That's awesome. Stickers for all the local punk bands. Yeah. And then one day, his boss said, he got to work, and it's like... In the machine was like all this stuck paper, it's like you know, you get it stuck in a photocopier, mm. yeah? and it's like you know, three issues of perfect transition meshed up. And he's like, What's I this? Got busted. Yeah, so it got busted. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. oh, well, you know, if you want to do it, like we'll help you, kind of thing. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. yeah, so then, you know, <coughs> yeah, so then you know, I remember going into a, after I got back from. A round so the trip, yeah, uh, in '87, and you know, like he had a color issue, and it was in news agents. So, so Oz had done this, yeah, 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 yeah. So there was 12 issues all up. Uh, Andy Ong was actually on the last yep. issue, 12. <coughs> um, yeah, so to his credit, he did another seven issues. That's brilliant. Yeah, so and it was pretty did you cool. did you actually have copies of the old ones, or you had to find sort of I had, to find them? I had I got all these last year. Yeah, so I had the original copy of the first issue. Yeah, yeah, which I still have. Um, one and one. then and then I made copies for Paul. He didn't have that one. Yeah. And then he had spares of heaps. And then uh, um, Andy Mack, just out of the blue, just from Brisbane, said, "Here you are." And it's like seven of them, and one was one that Paul didn't have. So just all these things fell into my yeah. That's right. Right. amazing. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, but every time I ask you for something, I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll have a look in the container. <laughs> I'll go That's into the, the archive. Yeah. <laughs> I've it got a laundry there. list. <laughs> Uh, but that, uh, that was awesome. So, it's, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things that is just... And it was it was pretty you know, much what was happening at the time because in Australia yeah. at the time, <laughs> like, yeah, we were six months, minimum six months behind of the magazines. Yeah. Where we really, yeah. You know, and it was cool because, like, basically... It was before. It's local. It's local. It was local. Yeah. Which is, which and, is and it was, kind of right. And it was, pre, it was pre-540 yeah. and all yeah. that sort of stuff, wasn't it? You know, it was pre-all pre that sort well, of the stuff. Well, the funny thing was, so there was a bit of a competition going. Um, there were... John Fox up in Sydney was going to do a magazine. What, what did that end up getting called? Skating, Skating Life. Life yeah. 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 And they Top were. The we, Skating Life. And I think yeah. what happened is they, I think they did a deal with Tracks Magazine and had a, you know, issues in there or something. But anyway, we, um, yeah, we, because it was punk rock, you just smash it out. You're not worrying about how mm. perfect it is. And, mm. you know, we, we, I don't think we, we had an Aussie ad in here. I don't think we even asked them. We just put it, just, <laughs> it yeah. just put it in there, and it you know we didn't, we didn't get anything for it. You know, we just um, threw it together, and yeah, it doesn't take long because essentially we would go skating, and then we would take photos, and yeah, there's the, the story. On the sap ramp, you got it. Oh yeah. Yeah, 80, 83 to 84 it lasted. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah. And his mum burned it to the ground. So there was, yeah. there was, there was so the second magazine, so the first one was this one issue in the 70s and there was another one that had three issues in the 70s, but ours was like the first of the modern era and it was yep. certainly the longest lasting yeah. for, that, for that time. Great legacy. Yeah, awesome. yeah pretty special. Like you, you don't realise at the time you're just smashing it out and then mm. someone wants to put you in a book. I reckon yeah. it's really you know? cool though yeah. that you just did it. You like, but that's you just, just how it was back then. Yeah, that was the DIY punk rock thing. I think coming in, yeah, you know, you didn't even punk, didn't punk feel spe everything. But, everything was doable. Yeah, and, and especially at that time, like everything was like, and you yeah. had to do it because that's the only way you made stuff happen. 
So it's like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you just got to make it happen. Yeah. But yes. at the time too, right? Sorry, sorry. No, because the, the, remember the punk rock fanzines? Yeah. They used to get those as well, and that was the thing. Yep. Just communicating yeah. the scene. Yep. yep. Again, before internet. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I was just so heading with that. Like, it was like, so you said at this time you were doing <coughs> playing records, you were doing, probably playing in bands, I don't know. What was kind of the, tell me about the punk rock side of things, mate. Where did you get into punk rock? So I probably started at Ringwood. We would um, listen to, you know, Devo, B-52. Someone would bring down their little cassette player and put a tape in and... Not you, quite a ghetto blaster. Nah, but, uh, uh, I remember. Not quite a transistor. I remember. <laughs> that, was, in the that was the guy who came down one day in a station wagon. He did actually set up a stereo, like a record player, and wired oh. it into his car and had two speakers. No, that was Darren Montague. Was that? Yeah. Darren? And, yeah, Darren and Tony Mead. Uh, Tony Mead. Me. Was it yeah, that? Was they that they used to put the speakers on the roof with the stereo in the back. Really? Yeah, I'm I pretty sure. I didn't know that. Okay. Wow. Yeah, in the white um, Escort panel van that they had. That's hilarious. That's yeah. You reckon it's him? I reckon it was, yeah. I remember okay. that sort of shit going on. <laughs> yeah, so but yeah, so you would you would have that music and so Triple R every night, every Saturday night had a, a call in request um, show and you could just call in and um, you know, request a song and so I'd always hang out or listen to two hours just to hear Freedom of Choice by Devo nice. or something like that, you know. So and through that I started hearing, you know, some punk music and um, I went to Swinburne University yeah. and um, there was heaps of bands, like every Friday different bands were coming through. Um, there was this band called Scum that were pretty sort of crappy, a bit of a Sex Pistols sort of style of 77 band, but um, the guys from Depression um, came in to watch. In fact, the whole Melbourne punk scene converged on Swinburne, yeah. it was rad. I'm sitting up there like having lunch with friends and then, you know, just I told Spike a couple of weeks ago the story about you know, I just got in the queue at the as they were getting some lunch in the cafeteria, and these guys were like, you know, this mohawks yeah, and wow. as tall as they were. And I was just like, wow, this is this is nuts. And um, so anyway, fast forward to after one of those union days, we got on the the train after a couple of beers, and a couple of punks were in the um, the train, and um, and I, you know, said something cheeky to them, and they came over. I didn't realise it was actually coming over to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, do you like the dead Kennedys? And yeah. like, yeah, yeah. 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 And so I um, manoeuvred my way out of, the, out of getting beat up to well the done. point where I was auditioning. I said, yeah, I'll play the drums. Oh, we need a drummer. Oh, oh cool. do you want to come this weekend? OK. <laughs> <laughs> and so they wind the clock fo forward, you know, a few months from there, Mad Flowers was the band. And we played at the, um, the venue supporting the Dead Kennedys. So my first ever live show playing drums was in front of a thousand people um, oh, supporting the Dead Kennedys hell. on their first tour. No way. And that was rad. Like I took Darren, DH Blue Grow, took him skating all over Melbourne, went to Berlin and, and Ringwood and all over. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a crazy story. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Like from not, not playing or you weren't playing much drums? Well, I, I played drums like from yeah. grade five. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but just off and on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Christmas result. Were you shitting your pants when you were playing in front of a thousand Absolutely. people? Absolutely. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, and because you're playing that <coughs> so fast. Yeah. And when you're playing it fast and you get tense, you're screwed because your arms yeah, become like, like these iron rods. Yeah, like, but it was just like the I'm energy on a was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's huge. Yeah, so it was pretty it was cool to be involved in that time. You know, because all those bands like Minor Threat were still going, MDC, like the, the whole scene was still active and current, that sort of first wave mm. of, of hardcore that we're in. So then Madflower sort of morphed into this band, um, Civil Dissident, where essentially the, the rhythm section of um, Civil Dissident and the singer and guitarist of Madflowers conspired to be in Madflowers together. So Tracy, who played bass in Madflowers with me, um, we were left without a band and the singer of Matt and um, Wayne out of Civil Dissident were left, so we joined forces. And that was the best thing because we just yeah. like our chemistry was incredible, mm. and, and we had a couple, few records like nice. this one, Menzies Crack, um, which is about the the white um, Australia policy at that time. Like it's killer stuff. Even to this day, there's people around the world who absolutely love you know the record. Yeah. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Do yourself a favour. <laughs> <laughs> Great plug, my Throw it a set of steak knives. Uh, it's on. It's on YouTube. So that was yeah. released. Yeah. You can get. You can, you can buy them on. Amazingly, the album's still pretty affordable. This one's maybe about three hundred bucks now. The seven inch, yeah. and this was a song about heroin. 
um, in the scene. Heroin makes the going easy with the more, with the uh, first blood. Yeah, first <laughs> the guy in the in the um, morgue. Yeah, so that was um, yeah, it's pretty killer stuff. And then um, through that, cool. you know, we were on lots of overseas compilations. We were on a, a, a compilation that Pusshead put out called Cleanser Bacteria. Yep. Yeah. And so with you know, it was almost currency. So you could you could actually trade tapes. You could trade. You make up your own tapes, your favourite songs, play them around the world, and the word would spread about I've heard. And then other mm. people would be trading. And like there's a, like a Spanish band covering one of our songs on Spotify. That's it's just mental. nuts. And so 86, like I'd saved up all this money and it's like, I'm going to go around the world. How did you save it up? What were you doing, Dave? I worked for uh, Westpac. You were the bank? Yeah. Yeah, which was great because I was... With your one set of clothes, you had a massive <laughs> fucking scratch. One for them, two for me. Yeah. Yeah. One for yeah. so, so I had a total of two pairs of pants during like the time at Westpac. <laughs> but the great thing about working at Westpac, just as, as an aside, they had these banks out the back. Oh, so oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. so I used to skate to work and... Yeah. Um, you know, I skate to Heathmont train station, then back down. And then um, at lunchtime, I'd just roll out and, um, you know, my business attire, front side car That's down yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah. after the oh, great know, fun, and lunch, and all the, all the people were just horrified. Oh. All the bosses, they hated it. Oh, wow. I like Pebble Mix or something. Because I was the yeah, anti. Yeah, 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 remember that. Not oh, very corporate, Dave. No way. Anti, Not very anti corporate. And they knew I was like from punk rock and all the rest of it. So I was the worst fit. I was a nightmare for them. It was great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. so, so I ended up um, through all these contacts. So I joined Vicious Circle because Russell, their drummer, who now plays in UMI, yep. uh, he had left because uh, he couldn't afford to go to the US. And so I said, well, I'm going anyway. And so I jumped on that. And then so toured America with Vicious Circle and we played with MDC, GBH, Agnostic Front, like wow. Wow, all these bands. Well, and How long did you tour for with them? Did 10 shows. We were yep. due to play with The Descendants in July the 4th in Louisiana and a couple of the guys had to go back to mm. work. And there's even flyers made up for the show with Descendants and Vicious Circle. Oh. So, no. God, no Milo for you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, they had bank jobs as well. They had to go back to it. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. yeah well, that's right. Yeah, so, but uh, but I, was, I was a free agent, so <laughs> I was like, I was able to keep, just keep travelling. So I hung out in LA for about six weeks and um, I had a mate who knew Spidey Demontrond mm -hmm. um, and so I got to hang with Spidey and through Spidey I met um, Steve Douglas and Bud Boyle mm -hmm. and we skated together all the time so you know we skated Joe Lopes's ramp which yeah. is if you look at footage when the when the bowls bowl scene died and the park scene died in LA or California Southern California everyone went to the ramps and they had yep. a first contest at Joe's ramp mm -hmm. and so I'll be skating this ramp Lester Kasai would turn up, Jeff Grosso would turn up, Lance right. Mountain, Jason Jesse. Yeah, uh, it was nuts. And I'm, I'm just skating and similar back to Ringwood days. <laughs> just pull back and just watch. watch. Yeah. Yeah. Take photos. Like, it was yeah. so good. That's amazing. And, and Joe was just this regular Joe. Regular Joe. Joe. Yeah. And uh, just a really nice guy. And, um, yeah, all these people were skating and that was just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's... Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's Bod. That's the backside air. There's actually footage of um, Steve Caballero talks about the the first contest they had at um, at that ramp. And there's a photo of Lance Mountain skating there as well, and a great shot of Jason Jesse doing a fast plan over the channel. Which ramp is that, Dave? That's not so true. That's not. Yeah, that's. Actually, no, that's no. not because it's got a mini ramp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that fence is each side. I'm, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, roof, yeah. Isn't that funny how much the house. details we know? That we oh, can man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> all you do. You just sit that, there and That was a white wall on the left-hand side yeah. and a yellow wall on the right. That, that's got a wattle yeah. tree. Yeah. It should be a dog, <laughs> Jeffy. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe Lopes is, from what I understand, was, is the, the house was really close to him. Mm. Is that yeah, super yeah, close. People people do foot plants off the roof. It's like the back fence, the side fence. Yeah, you do bomb drops off the roof. Well, people were sitting on the roof. Yeah, sitting on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I had a roll in, which was good for me because, like, I, I would drop in and I sort of got up to that. That's Lance Mountain. That's Ma is it? Uh, that's, oh, that's not Joe's. Yes, that's not, that's not Lopez. Are you that's sure? Not Lopez. Yeah. No, 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 it's not you. That's me. That means I've labelled it incorrectly. No, 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 I'm just. Uh, but that means then I've skated. I sk spent some time at another ramp. I don't think I did. Hang on, I think I might be getting my name. Is that Rob Roscop? No, that's Lance. Uh, is Joe it? Lopes ramp, sorry. Yeah, so that's that's Joe's ramp. And then we ended up skating, so after that, we ended up skating Lance's ramp, the ramp that's in Bad the Bones Brigade video, yep. the first one. 
It's like, you know, hanging out with Lance and... Holy shit. You know... Did uh, you write uh, Ben Schroeder? Right? No. Okay. No. So, um, where, where did you mainly travel to, Dave? Is this, is this 86, is All it? over the world. So, I was in... Um, had a round-the-world ticket. And so, yep. I spent three months in the US. So, I spent six weeks in LA, you know, skated, saw punk rock shows every... You know, the Circle Jerks, this and a few, the instigators, like, you know, just 10 band bills every Friday Amazing. night. Amazing. And then, um, yeah, skated Del Mar, went to Upland, um, went skated Sadlands, which was phenomenal. Like, yeah. I don't know if you know what Sadlands is. It was yeah, like a, a yeah. Little, that's that little, like a pond kind of, not like a, a moonscape. Yeah, moonscape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, was, that was great. That was near Anaheim. Well, that's um, crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, went to Disneyland and the bus driver actually got lost on the way to Disneyland, which was pretty funny. So all the <laughs> tourists, are t without any GPS, were trying to guide him how to get to Disneyland. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then I ended up going over to, I had a friend in Boston, so I went over to Boston. And I didn't realise, but I was actually staying in South Boston, which at the time was when Whitey Bulger was active. So I don't know if you know the story about Whitey Bulger. There's a movie made about, I can't remember the name of it, yeah. but essentially it's all Irish, you know. Um, Catholic, yes, you know, swinging bells, hard hitting, yep. like you know, essentially the mafia of the area. Yeah. And I remember um, one time they had all these like very patriotic, had these US flags up on the corner of the street. And I, I remember I just once I went and broke off a couple of flags to you know souvenir to take home. If I'd if I'd been like anywhere near, you know like the wrong person, I'd probably be down the bottom of the cement. bay in cement yeah. socks, you know. Yeah. Like, it was pretty, a pretty heavy, gnarly area. So in Boston, I, I was starting to run out of money, and so I made up a social security number, faked an American accent, and every day I would go to this um, place where you could get casual labour, and you'd get in a van with all these, like, you know, people who are almost homeless people, you know, needing to, um, living on the on the poverty line kind of thing. And I know oh, it's Dave Jones from California. And I remember one time- Steve I, Jones. Dave, Dave Jones. Oh, Dave Jones. Yeah. Jones. See, you can't even understand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember one Dave time, Jones and I, I let my guard down and like this guy said, oh, what's your <laughs> name? I dive. So dive, no Dave, you know. So, yeah, right. And so I probably get, I don't know, $600 or something from that. Then I went down to um, Washington DC and I stayed at Discord House with Ian Mackay. Yep. And, and Jeff Nelson and all those guys and got to see Dag Nasty play and, um, you know, back in the day and all these, like, amazing experiences. How did you just plug into that stuff? Like, is this through all your kind of punk contacts and your, your pen pals It's and just stuff? everyone looked out for one another. Yeah, okay. And it was paying it forward, you know. Like, so people would... Like, I've, got, I've still got the handwritten um, map that Ian wrote out for me. It's like, you know, you go left here, there's a big ugly building there and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, just, yeah, so I stayed with them for a few weeks and then we went up to New York. Um, yeah, we saw Discharge um, and Corrosion Conformity and DRI and Youth of Today on a bill and, and Discharge were in their sort of, um, um, their New World Order, I think was the name of the record. It was like this hair metal. It was the best. Like, people talk about that show in, in such legendary capacities. They went, it's like, if you want to see a live version of Spinal Tap, this is the closest. Oh, really? Oh. To it. So that we get on. <laughs> And instead of like, do control, do control. I was like, ha, la, 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 la. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, just these, anything that wasn't tied down, it's just coming. being thrown on the stage, hell. chairs and everything. And that band was like, fuck you, fuck you, no, fuck you. Wow. And then, the, and then the funniest part was the manager came on to our, you know, to rip into the audience, and he looked like the manager from Spital Tap. It was oh, just, yeah. that was the best. Right. So good. Um, but yeah, saw some crazy stuff. Like we were queuing up, um, get into the show, and there was a guy um, eating something across the street. And I said to my friends, I think he's got a rat in his hand because I could see the tail. And then I saw him lift his, his hand to his mouth and started chomping away, and you know, the tail and everything. So you just, oh, oh it was nuts. And in New York back in those days, it's really gentrified now. Yeah, right? yeah. Just yeah, yeah. But no, back yeah. then it was like, yeah, pretty yeah. hairy. Yeah. Like you go to Madison Square Garden Station, you know, we, we walked all night around the, all the blocks and then in the morning, like 6.30, you know, they're prodding the, um, all the homeless people to get up off the, the cold marble floor because, mm. you know, the commuters are about to come in and so you go to the loo uh, and they're all undressing and, you know, having their 
they're wash essentially they're washed for the day. Yeah. Full on. Yeah, so for a 21-year-old <coughs> bright-eyed, you know, Aussie kid. To be <laughs> <an eye> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> 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 Heathmont. <laughs> Education 101. Yeah, yeah. Full on. Yeah. That's unreal. Well, what an cool. experience though, like, you know, and, and all that comes from, you know, from your skating and you, you know, starting to listen to punk. Yeah, and look, I went to England for three months, so I, I drove government issue around the country. What does um, that mean? A government issue a band from Washington DC. Oh right, so I yeah. thought you meant like I drove government issue like I was on a yeah. bus or yeah. something or like <laughs> I stayed under 60, mission. what yeah. was it? That's a band, thank you very much. Yeah, a band, an amazing band from Washington DC. So I got to drive them around. <clears throat> I was friends with like the stupids, like, you know, because like Tommy and I used to, and Ed used to write to each other. So I ended up singing for the stupids at a show in Nottingham. There's a picture oh, um, there. Aaron, that was, pretty fun. that was a pretty fun night. And Heresy played and all these amazing bands of the time. You know, like um, I went back in 2022 to London and Lee Dorian, who played in No Palm Death and Cathedral, mm -hmm. was there. And he's like... Some might be Stupid. Uh, Stupid's Nottingham, maybe, in the punk folder. And, yeah, so he, he's going, oh, I've got all these photos of you. Because I said, oh, I've got a photo of you from your... From you know this show at Coventry and it was with Andy Sick. There you go. That's me singing with the stupids. Ah, oh, fucking cool. Just Different like, shorts. Jets and shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Green, Christmas green, 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 Christmas green, green, green. Yeah. And the 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 essentially the the roof was that high, so you had yeah, to kind of do this snug. contorted. Yeah. Yep. I really needed my protec that night. I think. The <laughs> <laughs> yellow one. Yeah. No, I had a I had a red yeah, one. Red one. Oh, red yeah. one. Yeah, that's true. You should have a red Yeah. What, so. What? One of the things that I was really interested in when we were talking on the phone right, previously right. is just about this kind of the communication that you would have with people at yeah. the punk scene and just it just sounded it, it just can you tell me what it was like this pen pal thing I, I just sounded amazing. Well, if you, you think about the age we were, so was, you were tw twenty one. Yeah. Nineteen twenty one. You're finding yourself and who you are, and and as is the person on the other end of it, mm. you've got similar tastes in music, and you're. You're kind of discovering about yourself through an outpouring. <laughs> it's a very cathartic process of just, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like 10 page letters. And mm. if you had a number of pen pals, mm. you know, you'd be up to like all hours writing letters. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was this amazing process of just connecting and, and building intimacy um, by sending something, taking three weeks to get there. And maybe, you know, by the time they got around to another letter, it'd be three months before you heard yeah, back. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So there was no immediacy at all in terms yeah, of the yeah. communication. Um, but what it did is it just developed these strong bonds. And, you know, I, I went, after England, I went to Amsterdam and I had a lead to stay in a squat in Amsterdam. Um, and I didn't know anyone there. Yeah. And within... A couple of weeks, I had contacts with the guys of Negazioni and Marco came up from uh, Milan. I had um, Tomas from uh, a band called Everything Falls Apart from Munich there. I had contacts from a guy I wrote to in Switzerland. That whole year I travelled, I paid for two nights accommodation. That's incredible. Uh, three nights. One night in, in Zurich and two nights in, <coughs> in Paris. So that was all from just this kind of, I mean, you must have just been, your biro must have just been smoking the whole time because it sounds to me like you were someone who really um, liked to correspond with people. You liked to communicate with people. You I, think, to, I think I like, I'm a very big picture person. So I like, I like to sort of look at an overview, like an umbrella of, of things and sort of understand where all the parts fit. And mm -hmm. I like this idea of connecting and bringing people together. And even mm -hmm. now, like that's just yeah. who I am, you know, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was just that was just the nature of the scene, and just from the story you tell, I mean, it clearly shows that's what's been made possible from your willingness to kind of do this. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because the, that the stuff you're talking about just doesn't happen to anyone. No, nah. you know, so it's all come through. No, this you got to take of, some risks and yeah. take some. Yeah. But you've also got to have the fire in you to be up because, like these days, stuff's so easy. But back then, it was so hard to do. You actually had to have that drive. Well, I was a part of the, the motivation was the fact I didn't really have any much money. Like I went to Europe with fifteen hundred dollars on a visa card, and that was it. And I lasted three months on that. This was in eighty seven. Mm. Um, yeah, I just had this desire to string it out as long mm -hmm. as I possibly could, and um, was successful with that. Hence the squat. You know, you, you, you're staying in places where you're not paying for things, or you're sleeping on people's couches, or whatever. You, yeah, you make totally. Your dollar go further, aren't you? So. And the squatting movement over in Europe is completely different to here. So there, yeah. they're very organised. They had bands, they had band rooms. They were venues. So Van Hull was the name of this 
squad. It was quite an iconic one. Um, and yeah, they used to have bands touring all the time, like coming through and, and they had a kitchen organised, you know, like, and you'd be, if you're living there, you'd be helping out preparing food, washing dishes. Wow. All this, it's very, it's, it's almost like a commune. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. yeah. Alternative commune. Yeah, definitely. That sounds really cool. Yeah. And where did you go after you, you toured around Europe and everything, Dave? What, happened, what did you do then? Did you come so back then, home? At then something? I came back, yeah, I eventually came, I went back to England for a couple of weeks. Um, did you take a skateboard with you? I had so when many. You went away to Europe? Yeah, it's really funny. There's a story when I when I went to DC for the first time, I just had a backpack because uh, I went down for a few days, and I had a backpack and a skateboard. And Ian said to me, "Geez, you travel light." Yeah. <laughs> Next time I went down, I had this massive, like, big army disposals bag yeah, right. full of records and, like, you know, whoops, <coughs> full of records and um, skateboards and. You know, I was buying vans for everyone because you couldn't get vans in right. Australia back then. Mm. So I had about 10 pairs of vans. Everyone's different like two for sizes. Else. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I actually, no, they, I, I traced their feet before I left. So oh. I could actually go into the, the <laughs> van store. That's how you did it. Yeah. Yeah. How you did it yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's hilarious. Yeah, so I did that and um, got, went to Heathrow and it took so long for them to deal with all the shit I had. <laughs> Um, that I actually missed my flight, so oh, I got to fuck. stay in England for another couple you of weeks. You didn't know that all you had and to it do cost was about... just put a filthy pair of rectors in there and they'd just sort of come. Yeah, <laughs> quick, get them out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, came back to Melbourne, um, had 20 bucks on to my name. Um, uh, I'd actually dislocated my shoulder stage diving in 1984 uh, at the CV Ballroom and um, then did it shortly after at Borgie's Ramp. And, had all these, like, I, I did it in my sleep at the end of the Vicious Circle Tour in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I registered with St Vincent's prior to leaving about yeah. getting some surgery. So literally three days after I got back, I, I was answered a phone call. Um, they wait, your turn on the waiting list is now up. Oh, my so, God. Yes. Um, next week, you're in. So, yep, so basically I went and came back, had surgery. Um, they put a pin in the, in the arm and... Um, yeah, just sort of started assimilating back into the punk scene, but sort of, a, you know, it wasn't the same. Like, the, the punk scenes actually turn over very quickly. Right. You'll see, like, it's the same, it's been the same all the way through. You, you tend to have one, one or two good years, right, and then you, people move on or move away or whatever. So, yeah, I, I was a bit restless, and um, Brett from Mass Appeal rang me and said, hey, um, we've got a tour with the Stupids, um, or with, I think it was, might, might not have been the Stupids, but there was another show. They didn't have a drummer. The drummer um, wasn't working out, and I think, for and, and left. And he said, do you want to play? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come up. So they flew me up to Sydney. We had a rehearsal and then played, you know, Paddington RSL with the Hard-Ons and the Stupids, I think it was. Awesome. Something like that, yeah, you know, a thousand, yeah. thousand people. And we just gelled really quickly. And so every, every weekend I was flying up to Sydney to play shows with Mass Appeal. And wow. um, yeah, we started writing songs. And after a year of this, I thought, well, I might as well move up. Mm. <laughs> like I was working in a health um, insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, actually, there's a photo there, Aaron, I think it's called Life and stuff. It's uh, Corporate Life, that photo. Um, yes, yeah, so I, was, I was working health insurance, answering phone calls, you know, by day, doing administration and then Punk on the weekend night. doing, yeah, <laughs> doing That's pumpkins. so hilarious. Yeah. Like, so you, compartmentalised. Are you yeah. No. <laughs> so that, that was pretty neat. Yeah, so so compartmentalised, that's amazing. This is, this oh, there is he goes. Ah! That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a cracker. How's that top? Pat the shoulders as well. Yeah. They don't make them like that anymore. That's a nice either. knitted... Sweat. Yeah, what's, that, what's that thing you're holding in your hand? It's called a telephone. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what's the thing on the end? It's, got a <laughs> it's called a David. <laughs> <laughs> now, kids, back in my day. Yeah, so um, yeah, so ended up moving up to Sydney where I lived for seven years. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, then, so that's like... Is that the start of the 90s, maybe? Or the end of the 80s? Late 80s, late 80s 80, 88. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. So Mass Appeal was... Um, I ended up doing this record with Mass Appeal, Jazz. Love it. Um, this, this record, actually, a lot of people like, really hold this in high regard. Um, we, we changed the, the first, first record nobody likes to think of, people know think because of, of the um, Ben Brown graphic, yeah. Yeah, which was a funny thing about and that. And the bong, 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 Yeah, so. dead ends. Yeah, so we, um, the band actually sold more T-shirts than, than records, records at yeah. one stage because people like... 
you know, they licensed the T-shirts to Acme or whatever, and yeah, people yeah. went, mm. you know, in Darwin were buying it or Wagga or Wagga or whatever, and knew nothing about the band and that it was a, you know, that it was actually a band shirt. They mm. just loved it. But, that's um, true, actually. That's, that's, that's really true. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, says a lot about Ben's artwork. <coughs> yeah. I'm still good mates with Ben all these years later. Um, so, yeah, so jazz was a, a, a depart, was sort of a leftover of songs from when Tubby was playing. Mm. Tubby was a monster. He's an amazing, amazing drummer, a lovely guy. And one of the great things about being in Massapeel is there was this community of drummers that we all loved and respected each other and mm. still do, you know. So it wasn't this, like, Versus, competitive yeah. environment, yeah, yeah, you know. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we, we changed direction when I joined and we sort of went less thrashy and a bit more heavy and the stuff really evolved. So, you know, after this record came out, we got to tour with the Rollins Band on their yeah, first tour. Wow. And we, I saw them 11 times that tour. And that was great. Travelled around the country. That was just phenomenal. Yeah, that was a fucking awesome tour. You're yeah, right. that was so good. Like, the most intense band I think I've still ever seen live. Absolutely. <coughs> I, remember, yeah. I remember seeing on that first tour and watching Henry warm up but by the side of the stage. Yeah. You just, you know, he's doing limbering up, he's doing stretches. Yeah. He's doing, and it's just so fucking intense. You can feel yeah. his energy. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, you yeah, just feel it. And they, they played at the Palais once, and we watched them. And then I, I came back the out. Palace. The Palace, yeah, the yeah. Palace. Came out, and, and you know the hill on the Palace there. And I was just out the front there, and I thought that was fucking amazing, whatever. I thought someone had let off. I think someone let off some fucking. What do you call that shit where you spray in your face? Mace. Like mace. mace or pepper oh, spray. Really? In the, yeah, in the gig, yeah. Oh wow. Because we were upstairs, and we we're like. Argh. Anyway. I was out the front and then um, I just turned around and there's this little guy next to me, just like this little fucking intense ball of something. It was Henry. Yeah. And he just walked off down St Kilda by himself and I thought, fucking, I'm not going to go and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fucking hyped up. He looked really angry. He looked in the spot and I thought, and he's just walked off by himself. I thought, that's full on. He's in that's, the zone. Yeah, in the yeah. zone. It's a beforehand and after, you know, same thing. That's funny because I caught up with Tim. And he need me in the face a few times in Geelong. Which I loved. Oh, there's a there's a cracker of a gig in Geelong. So it was it was bored, mass appeal. That's what I and like. and Rollins band. Yeah. And there was this pain in the ass of a of a kid mm -hmm. spitting beer yeah. in Rollins' face and like intimidating him. And oh, wow. and this and this and Rollins is like there, it's like and he's just working himself up, working yeah. himself up. The next thing you know, bang! And then you look at this guy. And it's like, you knocked my big black out. Yeah. <laughs> like, knocked his teeth out. And, and um, Rollins was shitting himself that, like, you know, the cops were going to get called. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. two was over, I'm going to get deported or whatever. Um, didn't happen amazingly. The kid must yeah. have copped, you know, that he essentially intimidated and yeah. worked him into it. Um, not intimidated, but, you know, it provoked him. Um, but then beyond that, like Henry went back and yeah, he got he, he got gangrene in, his, in the joint, oh, yeah, his no knuckle, <laughs> yeah. and he's lost all feeling in this knuckle. So there's like on his one of his spoken word records is this old talks about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he must have been oh, from, the guy must have been from Corio. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gangrene is a ball. A, Aaron, I think there's a Rollins band um, picture good, in the punk. Good, good band called Gangrene too. Wasn't yeah, it? that like that was just so good. And, and the guy, the musicianship was just next level. Yeah. So yeah. Rollins band were a massive influence on my drumming, yeah. Yeah. Um, which helped right. to shape, reshape the, the sound for Mass Appeal. Yep. And um, yeah, that further evolved. So I was involved in writing songs on the mechanics. So I left. Like probably beginning of 1990 mm -hmm. um, and yeah went and joined Caligula um, mm -hmm. which were like a sort of electro funk sort of uh, pop leader song, Jesus Jones, Faith No More, Red Hot Chili Peppers were all sort of becoming really yeah, popular yeah, yeah, yeah. and so um, Caligula was a, a, a band of myself and Sean from um, um, Mass Appeal and so that was our first I record. Yeah, and then I didn't um, know that till today. Jamie, yeah. Jamie Fonti, who was Sean's brother, um, they played in a punk band called My Heart Bleeds for You. Yeah. And then Jimmy on guitar played in another punk band. So it was just remnants of all these yeah, different yeah. punk bands in Sydney. And Dave had to sound something. off like he got a pair. Yeah, mm. that's right. That was one of our songs. Yeah, it was a cracker. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, that was fun. But then you know they had the feeding frenzy of Nirvana and so on right. yep. around that time. And, Feeding um, frenzy, yeah. Yeah, the record companies and I think, the, you know, the egos and the um, desire to get on major labels and, you know, got to the point where they said, um, we're happy with you playing live drums, like live, but when we play in the studio, 
and we're going to do electronic drums. What? No, you're not. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so very... That's the same time as Def FX were around as well, wasn't it, with Vianna Horn and that? Yeah, our first night, our first show was this really bad gig at the Hopeton Hotel. We we're just really nervous and un not together. Mm. And then we went down the street, uh, literally opposite the Central Station <clears throat> in Surrey Hills again, and um, played with Def FX. That was one of their first shows as well, and that was just like amazing. punch, punch, punch. Slammed yeah. it. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, and they're still playing together. They played the other day, but yeah, they're just so wimpy and yeah, I, and some of the integrity of you know, behaviours and so on was not something I I sat comfortably with at all. So yeah. with Caligula, <coughs> or oh, totally with Caligula. Right, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, just very not saying not, not very honest. That. Yeah, wasn't it? Not much point, but um, yeah. yeah, it just wasn't. We didn't gel as That's people right. either. You know, like you have a sense. It's actually, you know, I think. Musical bands are the hardest teams to work in of mm. any team I've ever experienced. You know, like I'm nearly 60 and I've led teams and I've been involved in teams in the corporate environment. Bands are like bizarre. They're just very, uh, you've got all, all these people with individual creative ideas mm. and it's a real skill yeah. to, to bringing in vulnerability and humility and a willingness to let go of your stuff and to, mm. you know, try and find a way to reach consensus and all this. Like bands like U2, for example, like they split all their money, 50%, uh, 25% each mm. across all the members. You know, they've got those sort of ideologies that make it work. But, you know, if you just need a couple of people with some big heads mm. and yeah. it's so disruptive, it's really hard. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's really challenging. Colligill was definitely a challenging band to, to be in. So you Became a victim of that, you think? So. Well, I... Th I don't think so. I, I think what happens first is you're that way inclined. Mm. You just need something to fuel the fire mm. and to, you know... Can, environmental yeah. conditions. Ignite like the bullshit. Happen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it was a good experience. We got to tour nationally with Jesus Jones and Pop Will Eat Itself and, yeah. and so on. That's amazing. And, yeah. What? Totally different music though to what you come from. Which I loved. Yeah, you know, yeah, I loved yeah. like, playing funk and... Um, yeah, I really like the challenge of that because I started with Caligula. I started taking things seriously, and I think there's a where is it? Um, the pasty. I ended up, I ended up getting drum endorsed by some drum companies. So over oh, here yeah. on the right is the um, our right is the pasty. If you like, yeah, that's uh, got endorsed by pasty um, symbols and pearl drums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got a, a pearl what does that a mean? drum sponsorship. What does that mean? Don't, it's like it's means you save a shitload of money when you get a new drum kit. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is it here. So this, yep. there we go. That was the promotional picture for the pasty ad. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Holy shit! How's the different looks? That's Caligula era that for you. Man, yeah. that's, that's, that's hard to believe <laughs> that's, that's, that's even not, you. That's 1992. So that was actually after Caligula. Um, I lived with a, a, a great couple of women in inner Sydney. And um, yeah, Kay was a makeup artist and made me up. And I think that's her <laughs> necklace and her hat. Um, yeah, we had a smoke machine going and all sorts of things. <laughs> Aaron and I do that shit all the time, just hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, so I got endorsed. Um, oh, I, that's brilliant. Yes, and I took my drumming really serious. So I was practicing, you know, five hours a night, you know, eight hours on the weekend and, you know, put a lot of work into it. And, yeah. When, when do you think you were at your peak with your drumming, Dave? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not saying you're not at there now or you can't be. I'm, def I'm definitely not. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely or not. They're all different peaks from different bands. That's true. I think Mass Appeal probably, like, in terms of feel and like if I listen to those records mm -hmm. and what a, it's really hard when you listen to yourself play back because it's like especially for me like I pick up every nuance every maybe thing that I didn't quite get right and I'm sort of like maybe being over on it and hypercritical yeah, yeah yeah and I think that's normal yeah maybe it is I don't know yeah, it's what professional does yeah perfectionism but, but it's the chemistry and the gel between the instruments and that's what mass appeal and, mm. and civil dissident really had you know Caligula not so much but you know, with those first couple of bands, and that's why they're special because mm. there was just something about the songwriting, how we all came together creatively to to generate that. So maybe not technically at my peak, but I think in terms of what I'm most proud of, it would be the Civil Dissident Mass cool. Appeal. I'll definitely releases. go give them another listen. Yeah, but you know, even now, like what I can play on the drums, I can play stuff I could never play back in the day. Yeah, right. Just through you know trying different exercises do you, and. Do you drum a lot now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try and drum every day. 
That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I have to like the band I'm in now. Fun again. Uh, we're awesome. doing we're doing like um, songs by Mass Appeal, and mm. our singer was in a California band called Stardog Thirteen. Mm. Um, oh no way. Yeah, yeah Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ron. Yeah, yeah, Ron singer. Melissa, who played in Board. Um, Adam from Arm the Insane. Um, <coughs> you know, like I've got these great, great these people, people who can. And Melissa's like amazing. So we push each other. Yeah, so we, we play like, you know, we play Bad Brains, Minor Threat, Bad Religion, mm. Descendants, Dead you know, Dead Kennedys, uh, plus our own songs. Have you been, Rich? Yeah. I'm going to come here. Yeah, you'll love it. Yeah. It's, and, you know, like to play those songs and, and <coughs> to do them justice, you have to be on top of your game. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, this and is fun again. This is at the Bendigo Hotel. Yeah, and power, like just powered out. Yeah, and, and this was at, at um. How's your shirt, man? This was this was a this was a gen. Animal by name. Animal by this name. was a gen fest, wasn't it? Yeah. This yeah. one's a bankrupt. So, yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, awesome. There, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, photo of you skating there. Fuck, I was sore from that. Yeah. Yeah. For, oh, no joke. For about two weeks. Yeah. Springy ditch. Yeah. Yeah. About two weeks afterwards, I ran to Noel later on and said, "Man, are you like sore after? Because like it's a totally different sort of skating." Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was. I felt like my hips were going a whole lot. Probably because my sm- I was riding a slightly bigger board. How old are you now, Lucas? I am fifty-three now. That's probably why. I reckon it could be to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fifties, it kills you, man. But but, but that also but, like that, but that night. Yeah, it's not hard yeah. But that night, I was like a kid at a water slide. Oh yeah, it's I was just like fucking going down it, and I'm like, so I'm back fun. up there, like for about yeah. three it or four hours straight. Yeah. It really is. But that's fuck, such a good fun day. Two weeks afterwards, and have you guys playing live would have been nuts. That was great. A bit scary. That first show, we'd only rehearsed that afternoon for the first time. And like the guys hadn't, a couple of the guys hadn't learned the songs as well as I, I thought they might have. I would hope they would have. So it was like going in there, oh, it's going to happen, but we just like well, just that's, punk that's and what flavor. whatever. That's and just, punk, man. Yeah, I remember. Just I remember. It. it really like, made the it really made the the, the night. It was great. Yeah, it really. Yeah. Yeah. The well, fact a live, that you really a live band. Yeah, I remember at Melton. They, <clears throat> were you there, Tony, when they had the live band at Melton? Mad Flowers yeah. played there. Melton. Mad Flowers. Yeah. It was mental. And like, so you go up on the high wall and you just get. Whacked by the band, and then you go into the hole. I reckon you're in England at that stage. And you come back down, and then you do like a backside air or a frontside air, and just go thump, thump every time, and it just hits you like a wall of sound. So I'd imagine in the ditch, just be going all the way, all the way to Noble Park, stopping all stations. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I think this, so my understanding is that they've had live bands every every (coughs) year, they've had it, and the generators actually um, failed. So they had to like pass around a hat and you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, and, you know, buy a new yeah, 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 yeah. No went, no went and bought Chris one. one on the barbecue. Yeah. So, so well done. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking there. amazing. No, yeah. the lads, great what they do, how they pull stuff together, is unreal. I know a couple of times we've been washed out because of the rain. <coughs> yeah, but, um, oh, it's, it's have it's you been there. Yeah. To it? I've written it years. I've written it yeah. years ago before it became like a thing. It's a fun event. It is fun. Really I need to go to one of these. I was too nervous because I'd only started. So I've only started skating for the first time in. 35 years properly, like a year ago, started a year ago. So this was March. I wasn't ready to skate it. Like with Neither it I bought too. So intimidating. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and yeah, my board was wrong. So what I did is I went back the next day because it was all still clean and yeah. you know, like yeah. I took, took the broom and cleaned practice, up all practice, the wet practice. spots. And um, I had my long board and my normal board. It went, and I was even at that point, I was nervous about just going down into the ditch. It's so gnarly. I did that. it on my <laughs> normal board and it was like so rough and slow. Got on the long board. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so next year, like yeah, oh, this year. Long board central. Yeah. The, a, the other um, element of the chaos, though, is just everyone fucking going everywhere. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, dark. Yeah. And it's yeah. dark. And you've got a couple yeah. of floodlights. And, and there's, there's, yeah. Yeah. there's skeletons sticking out of the hole. There's those outlets too, right? Didn't someone, yeah, yeah. Didn't someone eat shit on some of those? Yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, it must have been about 2013. Um, my partner at the time, Anna, she's laying in the pipe taking photos yeah. on, on the delayed of people going past that. Yeah. God, she got some great photos. Yeah, you've got those, those just those little holes every now and again. Yeah, anomalies. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you've got the odd little drips of water still coming down. But they'd, they'd bagged it up with kitty litter, which was really cool. But I found the kitty litter a few times and fucking ate oh, shit no. bad. Yeah, <laughs> all these scars yeah, up and yeah, down yeah. here. <laughs> the yeah, 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 yeah. But they're worth it. <laughs> yeah. So worth it. But yeah. you know that's that that represents nineteen seventies skating for me. That's been my okay. favourite <laughs> skate thing I've done. In, I'd say in the last. It is. Years. It's, it's yeah. a, stuff awesome. like that's unreal. I'll tell you. It's I reckon. Simple. Yeah. Yeah, and that was really good. And the other day that was uh, in my eyes, it went down in Victorian skating. That was awesome for all us old crew. Mm. Was when they had bowler drama at Cryo in two thousand and seventeen. 
Yeah, that oh, was, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that, we've got to have that again. That, you yeah. love that, Dave. It was so good. One of my Can you hear that, Al, Al Miller? Paging Al Miller. Can yeah, you sort of get your shit together? That was amazing. It's his yeah. birthday today, by the way. Oh, yeah. happy birthday. Yeah. 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 What is that? 59? 59, yeah. Not bad. I love Big 60 is next year. Okay. Oh, God. I, also, I, 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 I retract that then. <laughs> I don't know if I can see it. Do you remember the sessions at Karaya? Oh, Where yeah. pipes, with, man. with Mike and Mel bringing their, bringing their cars down and putting the speaker on top of their yeah, cars. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it was hilarious. So can you show, I want to tell you a story about the time we went to um, Karaya one time. So um, Aaron, in the skateboarding one is a, the Westgate Bridge photo. So we had this, um, we had this like um, mission where we were, we were in, <laughs> this, we were in this minivan <laughs> and we had planned it beforehand. There was a bunch of people who went street skating and um, Poz was there and Mark and um, we got in, we got into this van. This is Westgate Bridge. We actually skated down the Westgate Bridge. Oh, the the van stopped in, at the top. We bailed out, yeah. pushed off and then just went flying Bombed. down. So the van was uh, behind you to stop cars coming? Or? Yeah. I don't think so. I, think, I don't know. Maybe they kept yeah. going. But um, they had an emergency lane back in those days. Yeah. So we were flying down. There's the red Is that Al, Would you? No, yeah. that was, um, I can't remember his name. Oh, he used to come to, um, he used to go to street sessions. And was the, it the list? The guy from Arabic? Dave? What's his name? I think he was from Bayside. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was, friend, he was friends with Rod from the Dorks. Oh, okay, um, maybe it's not in there. No, it's not the list. I can't remember. But anyway, I'll, so... I'll score in the list because he wouldn't do anything without... He'd have to do everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Remember that guy? Yeah, that's a great nickname. <laughs> that's so, a great nickname, so, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> oh, it is a bloody classic, mate. So to be able to skate down the Westgate Bridge was pretty awesome. That's awesome. And, yeah. then, and then from there... We went to Werribee Pipes. So can you pull up the Werribee Pipes photos, please? I've never seen skated that. Yeah, I didn't, oh, I didn't get that to either. Epic. I was already down the island. And I remember so. Noel, Noel, Noel contented, um, commented a while back about how, you know, he never went there much. And I was thinking, why did we not go there every weekend? Oh, mm. I only went there like three or four, maybe three times in total. I heard of it after it was finished. So this oh, is, right, this okay. is me skating Werribee Pipes. Fuck. And it was just like skating Mount Baldy or something. So it's the rapper and I used to go just about every second weekend. Really? Okay. We'd yeah. our, take our bikes on the train to Ruby and ride our bikes out here and just go to a different spot every weekend because there'd be a new section that made during the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brand new, longer. Yeah. Um, this section here that you're in, is that where the, the inspection passed? Yeah, in the middle, like yeah. Mount Baldy where it goes. So, is that 85 or 86? Uh, no, this is 84. Yeah, it's 84. 84. Yeah. So you see that, Lucas, where the light is? Mm -hmm. That's an inspection port. A shaft. Straight just, down. So, yeah, yeah. To yeah. A, like a, a half pipe. There's some rad photos that people have yeah, got. Yeah, Russell's got some, got some ones of yeah. Russell and, yeah. yeah. Right up on the yeah. And there's another so one. So naturally gives you light. That's right, yeah. And you can skate like, you know, what, 40 feet beyond that and mm -hmm. come back in and like hit the high side and stuff. So, so we used to muck around, so we're just doing all these manoeuvres off the sign out the front of the pipes. That's where you had to go to get into it. Yeah, so you had to Oh, okay, so you had to go through the... You had to jump these you gates. You had to jump the fence. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah. It's totally trespassing. Dodge the and, and then also that makes the, more the workers were working there. Construction workers were working while we were skating. They didn't give a shit. Was no, no, they didn't care. And um, yeah, so it was bad. That's unreal. That's cool. <laughs> There's me doing like some sort of a layback or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went down to Karaya. So we had this like, you know, like yeah, stops, yeah. stops oh, yeah. stations. That's a whole thing. day, that oh. is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was and a fun and day. We had fun. so much energy. So much fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah we used to do that yeah. too. We'd do Melton, Karaya, Melton, Karaya and, and Bowie on the way home or Park yeah, Road. Yeah. Oh, wow. They're like, long, tie, they're tie long days, bikes. man, yeah. And always, someone was always driving. There was an old, older, and, older guy that was driving. Yeah, yeah. and the car for yeah, That's the that's Karaya. So you gave me oh, this yeah. photo, Tony. Yeah, it's my, I, 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 used to, I always bought a camera. Yeah. And that's Robert Ginotto's car. John Robert Ginotto's car behind it. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, look at that. Oh, look at the car. Yeah. Look at, oh, that would oh, yeah. sick. He can't pick us up. Fuck, we, that's we go awesome. Down to in the, in, go down to Monaro and go down to Karaya in the Monaro. And I still the same pair of shorts I wore to the jam. Yeah. Suck my something. Nope. The graffiti. <laughs> Someone's done some breakdancing graffiti popping in there. Poppin'. So these guys used to turn up and we yeah. used to call them Mike and Mel, and they weren't Mike and Mel. Remember the Leyland <laughs> I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we used to call them that. They used to turn up in their van, Land Rover, and, and pull out these speakers, put them on their car, and just blast right music. 
So the session was happening once these guys That's awesome. Up. I've got video footage of all this. I used to take a video from uni. Yeah. Like those big power pack things. And <laughs> um, I think Aaron might have transferred it for me. Yeah. Onto well, digital. Yeah. And, um, and it's like probably, I don't know, maybe an hour of footage. Yeah. Of just us messing around. Yeah. No way. And skate. Haven't you ever seen it? No. Nah. Oh, it is really neat, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, we, we, sh we should watch it, it's funny. You know what, I mean, yeah. Rad, um, Tony Mead had a beta cam at 86 at Moomba when we had the Moomba comp on the, yeah, twist, yeah. the Twisties comp. Yeah. He's got footage of that and that should get digitalized. Oh my gosh. That'd be awesome. Well, I was saying, yeah, I was saying to yeah. Al, Alan, Alan <laughs> Wedge, <laughs> we, we just skated yeah, Albury, yeah, yeah. Albury Skate Park the last couple of days. Amazing oh, yeah, yeah, skate yeah. park. Yeah. And we're having dinner and I was with, with Al and, and Wedge and Hugh and I just said like, you know, this gathering of like 10, 15 dudes plus us and, you know, wh whoever, there's a documentary in here that's like mm. stories that have to be told about, you know, because I was talking before about how we had our own spots. We had, you know, the Creo crew, the Dubton crew, Bon Morris and, you know, Parkdale and Ring. Ringwood. And, and, the, and what's happened yeah, now yeah. is that we are what's left, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone else has moved away and like, you know, people have, like me who have gone out of it and like many have gone out and come back at different times. And, you know, the stories there about why skateboarding means something now mm. that meant something so much 40 years ago, 50 years ago, um, is pretty phenomenal. Mm. Like, that's, I don't know, you can't, you can't do that with ice hockey and me. team sports and a lot of this stuff, you know? Started Aussie when I was seven. Like, yeah. No, you can't, yeah. It's but pretty, the friendships remain. Like, so you and didn't and see Poss for 35 years, <coughs> whatever it was. Yeah, just... You know, the, like this, yeah, yeah. Away you know the difference visit. between, like, skateboarding for that long and playing footy for that long? None, none of us have slept with anyone's wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole difference. All, all still virgins. Is that what this? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I didn't no, see we, that coming. We were that, we were there for a long time. But that's the difference between skaters and you know, footy players, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's so enlightening. You're right, though. Yeah. I think, oh, there, I think there is. I, I like this toilet paper that he's got it's hanging up. A, and it's a story that I don't think has been told. I, in I think that, it's more in inclusive sense. now. I think it's. I feel it's more inclusive now. Like, whereas before you'd go skate yeah. like a group and you'd be like, oh, the locals would be competing or you'd have to try to size up or you'd have to try and I'd you'd get spurred on by it. But now people are like, yeah, oh, okay, just go fast or yeah, hit the curb or, people you know, encourage grind. Like, if you exactly. do a grind, yeah. back in the day, it's like, oh, whatever, grind. Now it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah hit, it, hit oh, it, you know? Yeah. The, class, the classic one, right, was like Rowan Griffin. I haven't spoken to Rowan for years, like yeah. since Poz's ramp virtually. Oh, wow. And... The first thing he did to me when we connected on Facebook a few years ago, he goes, I'm so sorry, Rich, that we were so mean to you. Because <laughs> oh. they were gnarly to me. holding on to that. Yeah. Yeah. But that long, and that's the first thing he said. That's so nice. That's good, yeah, though, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it was ace. That's you know what I mean? It's got a conscience. Yeah, yeah. and it was yeah. a cracker. Because like, I was, a, you know, I was probably, like, you, you guys, Poz is six months older than me or something like that. Right. And then you guys were that a little bit older. And yeah, so I was like this little whippet that was getting whipped. <laughs> were you getting the? Gr you were the grom. Yeah, yeah, and I was I was quite small. Well, he, had, he also a... had larger. Yeah, than larger ears. Ears. So they so had, had finally grew. Yeah, head grew into ears. Yeah, yeah, he, had, he had a nickname of Big Ears. Yeah. Um, Can't see why, man. They haven't got big ears at all. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Dave told me that story, not and I was anymore. like, <laughs> Yeah. And so even like. Oh, I can't see it on here, mate. Yeah. I can't see it on here. But I'm pretty sure Zach started calling me Big Ears when we were skating down at um. Springvale Ramp. Yeah, I, I couldn't call you. So, in the same way, I can't call Clint Ching. Yeah. Like, Come I in front of the camera. Oh, oh, no, he's yeah, across the camera. I can't do it. professional oh. gig and he's just walked in front of the camera. Oh, shut up. Shut there up. You go. This is Aaron. Welcome, Aaron. No. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron. <laughs> Spot the Kiwi. <laughs> What's you that, know, Adam? Check it out. Adam, Adam um, oh. Aaron is a dentist. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, can I give you a, the Civil Dissent T-shirt? You did, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, you held on to it. Yeah, hand, hand screened. Yeah. So, that's skating and stuff. Yeah. What else have you done in your life, Dave? Skating's all that matters. Um, <laughs> we can talk about collecting at some point. Um, yeah. What did we do? What did you do in the in the meantime? So, so you got doing, you played. So yeah, yeah, yeah got so married in Sydney and yeah. Um, if Aaron was at the desk, he could pull up a picture of my, my wedding day, but. That's He's going to go do that because I don't think that other thing was working. <laughs> yeah, I was married for about 20 years, um, mm. 7, 10 years. And, um, we living in Sydney? Yeah, well, initially in Sydney and then we got married in Sydney on Cremorne Point. Um, and we had the, um, the funny thing was, you know, I was telling you that Old 55 was the first band yeah, that yeah. saw the Scout Jamboree. 
Frankie J Holden um, had that was on that show, The Great Outdoors. So yeah. our our wedding was featured on The Great Outdoors. Oh, wow! Ninety four, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so there we are. So we actually dressed up in. in <laughs> Fuck 18, you in guys the, came in. In eighteenth century. Um, <laughs> In 18th century <laughs> costume with pantaloons and everything, and um, yeah, we got married that, on Sydney Harbour. That and, really uh, is fun. We had our we had a, a our, our wedding transport was a double decker bus. Cool. And, um, so was mine. Who was the piss yeah, boy? Yeah, cool. In England, yeah. What's that? Piss Who was boy? the piss boy? <laughs> self piss service. Boy. Self service. <laughs> <laughs> um, it took us around to the rocks, and we got on the bounty, which is where the reception was. Yeah, how cool, man! And, wow, um, that's yeah. very unique. Yeah, so we had um, three, three children, so uh, they're now 27, 25 and 19. Wow, um, grown-ups. Yeah, yeah, which is Adults. really weird because, you know, I'm only 35, so I don't know Yeah, I know, you've got great moisture out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I got go. married. Um, what did you do for crust up there? Uh, well, I was back in Melbourne, so I was, I was working in working in a couple of companies up there and I ended up working with Bayer, which is a... A German pharmaceutical mm. and agricultural chemical mm. company, and um, fi finished up with them only three years ago. So, yeah. Um, yeah, worked with them for 27 years. What were you doing? What was the? Uh, I got role? a IT project management. Started off in customer service, mm. customer service manager, then IT project management, mm -hmm. and essentially doing lots of program management, project yeah. portfolio management. Um, in tw 19, 2019, 2020, I moved to Germany for a year, yeah. uh, three days' notice to. Um, Lead a, pro a massive hell. global project. Jesus. And um, yeah, Luke was there the during COVID. The family too, or no, just me? Just you, yeah. My kids are, you know, with their mum, and we were divorced. Um, you know, about 2011, 20, no, 2012, I think. Um, yeah, so the kids were fine. Um, you know, they were old enough, and mm. so on. And I was actually going to bring my younger son Noah over to Germany, but we couldn't because of COVID and lockdowns right. and so on. Yeah. So it was really interesting. So I had this really minalist life of living with just a few t-shirts and shorts that I took for a six week trip or whatever. Still got the black ones. So. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the Christmas ones. But the funny thing, yeah, so I ended up yeah, working in Germany for a year and then finished up with the company because they had a big restructure. Um, but yeah, during... How long were you in Germany for? Or? One year. One year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so a German. Uh, I expect I'm busy in Deutsch. Yeah. Happy years, looking. Yeah, no, I speak a bit. My my partner Maria is German as well, so she always every day I just do a little bit of Duolingo. Hey. She pulls me up. A little bit well, of it. Did you say? I just ignored him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. You just ignore him still. Yeah, yeah. He will go away eventually. <laughs> so, so you so you went there in lockdown and then you just worked. Essentially, is it or? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, worked and then With every, lockdown, every weekend there. I was going. Oh, it's much, much less than Melbourne. Like we yeah. were hearing stories oh, man, about Melbourne and seeing on social media and you know keeping an eye on the news and so on. Um, there, you know, it was summer, so it wasn't. It was only when winter came and people were more later hosted indoors. In sunscreen. And it's all. like, well, that's something <laughs> Bavaria. That's that's a Sorry. misconception about Germany. It's Sorry. like right down in the south. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I, I'd travel all around Germany, but my projects were so busy that I couldn't actually get a break yeah, right. until um, the summertime, and that's when <coughs> the, uh, the winter time. Sorry, and that's when the um, the country started to really lock down. So oh. I, I I I played in an AFL. Can you believe it? At 56, I played in an AFL in footy team in Cologne. <laughs> that's fucking mental. No way. Never played footy in my life. I went down to the park in front of my apartment to That's so uh, cool. exercise one day. What was your team called? There's the a guy. <laughs> no, no, right now, Lions. The AFL have a whole European league, yeah, yeah, yeah. German league. and They're taking over the world. Yeah, that's that's me tackling up. That's yeah, bizarre. Oh, God. So played, oh, look at the face. So I played full forward because I couldn't be bothered running. Um, so they just wait. No, that, that's it's overrated. overrated. It's overrated. That, looks, that looks like someone had a dog to grab with. <laughs> What's your door? I was really badly sunburnt legs. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, though, that, oh, that knocks you around. Oh, that Trying to do footy, physical exercise with that type of intensity. <laughs> is like, like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that intensity is like nothing else. Of it. And I was reasonably fit. I was working out, yeah. you know, doing workouts every day. I'm riding my bike everywhere, but that's just a, using muscle groups you've never used and before. And changing direction quickly. And, and, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah so I ended up tearing my um, calf muscle. Oh. And my last training session, I was just about to go overseas, uh, to, overseas to, to um, Scandinavia, and that held me up for about 
three weeks because I, I, I couldn't walk. Wow. You know, I was basically so what's that called in German when you do a hamstring? Not a hamstring, a calf muscle. Oh, calf muscle. What's yeah. that called then when you do a calf muscle in German? Come on. Very sore. Very sore. <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, but because of that, it delayed my departure to travel around. Mm. And people in Melbourne are like, travel around. How <laughs> you privileged. Sacrilege. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Rub it fucking in. <coughs> <don't you? laughs> so, um, yeah, so I ended up going up to um, Gothenburg in Sweden and um, I found out there that I had, you know, I was going to Norway. Heard from the woman at the bar that Norway just closed its borders four days ago. So I thought, okay, I'll head up to Finland um, and booked accommodation and rerouted everything. Got to the, drove all the way up. It's miles. It's a really mm -hmm. long way. I drove, got to the border of Finland and um, oh no, we closed the border 12 hours ago. So it's oh, like <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so I was in the Arctic Circle. So okay, I've got three days to see the Northern Lights. And I was looking at the weather and I was due to have snow in three in three nights. Night number one, clouds. Night number two, clouds. Night number three, clouds. Got to bail because I can't get snowed oh, in. No. So, oh, no. Yeah, I just spent a week in Stockholm and I stayed in prisons. In um, They have prisons as accommodation. Wow, Sweden, really? Which is amazing, yeah. yeah that's is it really good? Cool. Or? Yeah, you get a yeah meal it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah, you get Not a, a creepy yeah, vibe about it? Bread and water is pretty friendly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, no, it's Showers are friendly. <laughs> showers are friendly. They are actually the, these, all the original communal showers and everything, yeah. <laughs> they're, a bit more they're a little bit more liberal in Europe. Very so like, yeah. did you get a tape on a rope? <laughs> Quick, quickest showers you'll ever have. So, um, yeah, Probably so that, well, that was good fun. And you just, it's, you know, it's, I think that's the theme of my life. You just make the most but you've just of done any so situation. Many diverse things, and you've just sure. rolled with the flow, which is awesome. You've got to make the most of the Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What an adventure. Yeah. yeah. And this is um, this is um, the carnival. So in 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 the Rhineland area, which yeah. is on the Rhine River, they have the um, carnival, which are they they dress up in these um, satirical, yeah, in clothing. So everyone dresses up in these outfits. This Once is just again a, something that Aaron and I do all the time. Yeah, I've seen photos. Mm. Yeah. And is that when you when, <laughs> is that when you ate the dodgy bratwurst and you just realised that you'd swallowed it? No, that was like just posing. But, um, <laughs> that's his face still from when he had the shower. Yeah, that's what it was. That's his hair. <laughs> it's, 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 I was so nervous because COVID was just like yeah, happening. Wow. And I was like, I went in, like I didn't really know anyone and everyone had already organised their social activities. So yeah. I didn't really have any friends to hang out with and yeah. I didn't really want to because it was like... No one well, you really wanted to hang out with them but just anything. a bit further away. Yeah, yeah. and like, like, so I just ducked in, went down to um, the main area where the, the floats were going through and kept the distance and, and backed out again. It was really quite strange. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's an interest, it was an interesting time all that. How did your project go? That's a really good question. So we ended up, so I had a team of 50 people in India. Um, Still better than trying to be a band. and so yeah. on. Yeah. Um, we had a team of like, I had 15, 23 websites across 15 countries that had to be rebuilt on a new platform including some really complex ones. So Pornhub's so big now, isn't it? Like, no, it's joking. It's not your It's not your So moving right along. So yeah, so <laughs> navigating all that and um, being able to coordinate all those remotely was um, yeah, a real challenge. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of them were like, you know, I did a workshop in Sydney, I did one in Tokyo, um, you know, so I got to do a little bit of travel. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of screen time, mate. Yeah, but this also explains why you could put perfect transition together so well on the typewriter. Yeah, I've always liked English. Like, like in 2016, yeah, yeah. I went back to university mm -hmm. and I did my, I did double masters. I did an MBA wow. and a master of leadership. And there's a picture, graduation picture in there, um, Aaron. How old were you when you went back to uni? Mm, 20, was it 2016? So 52, I think. That's, wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I just, you know, for me, that was unfinished business. I wanted yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, tick that box and get that done. And were you, were you with the family then or were you by yourself then? No, well, I was actually, so I was dating a woman in DC for about seven years. Mm -hmm. um, we had a long distance relationship. Very long. Yeah, and uh, Kim, and that was, that was um, really great while it lasted. And, this is um, where your pen pal skills came into hand. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, it's like degrees, oh, like, Full circle. I'm playing softball with Ian McKay on a Tuesday night in Maryland. You know, oh, that's like cool. With the same group of friends and so on. So yeah, that all that all sort of came. Um, it's unreal. Full circle. It was quite that's a, huge. Amazing. To do a double degree and the, the, the masters. Oh, that's that was massive. so intense. Like yeah, yeah. literally, 
I didn't have time for anything else. No. Like work, study, sleep, a little, little bit of time. Like a thesis kind of for your masters, or was mm, it? Like... That's probably more a PhD. No, yeah. the, he, essentially there were sixteen subjects, and you had yeah, group yeah. assignments. Some of them were study subjects. So yeah. we had one. We had a number of residentials down at um, Warm Ponds in Geelong, and we had a couple. I went on an international marketing tour yeah. um, to Boston, New York, and DC, which mm -hmm. is perfect because it finished and <laughs> came out to dinner with us, and you know <coughs> that was cool. Um, and then. We did a, the best one was we sailed a tall ship down the east coast of Tassie, not knowing anything about wow. sailing. And by the end of it, there's, there were three teams um, of about 15 in total. And between us, we, we took total control of the ship sailing and climbing up the masts like the pirate, you know, ships yeah. and Arr. letting down the sails and everything. It was. Uh, so was that, that was about your about leadership cabin boys course that was? Yeah. So yeah. there were there were leadership yeah. concepts that you had to um, study, understand, apply, mm. evaluate. You, you went in with leadership goals. So we had a thing called a. A, a team charter where mm. at the beginning everybody wanted to plot what was important to them in terms mm -hmm. of what they wanted to get out of the experience and and what would give them meaning and what their personal goals were and so we coagulated all of those to essentially like a document and I tell you what if more companies did and teams that. did that yeah, right. and sent their sent their groups out on a ship where you you know where you chucking, your, chucking your guts out yep. over mm. you know yep. um, yeah, it's, it was a <coughs> good kind of group building. Oh, team incredible building and design. unforgettable. The best, yes, yeah, the yeah, best team yeah. building environment I've yeah, ever yeah. seen. That's amazing. You know, and we were, we were still good. The people on that group, are, um, one of them actually, Kim, um, became the the president of or the CEO of Australian Red Cross. So there was some pretty good caliber, and, and sadly, he died last year. Um, wow. Yeah, so there was like just these amazing people that you and this is mm. the, the unexpected thing about going to uni it wasn't just the learning and the personal academic challenge, it was actually the, this network of people who were yeah, going bond, through yeah, the yeah, same it's thing and it's like, you know, now we're like <coughs> really close. It's like skating except on a different, you know, yeah, different. tangent. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I imagine that people who apply to do leadership things are people who really want to go places and do things, real movers and shakers. So you're going to have people there that are entrepreneurial, you're going to have people that are just, you know, going to do shit or want to do shit. You'd think so. You'd think so. It sounds like... You yeah, would think so. But, uh, you know, there were some people, you know, there were the, had this idea about D's get degrees. Like, I had a, a high distinction average because yeah. I was a poor high school student. I just scraped past. And, you know, the only reason I went to uni and I dropped out of uni initially um, was because I wanted, you know, to pass the subject that I failed in in high school, I ended up spending all my time doing radio shows on 3SW and watching bands and you know hanging out in the cafeteria. <laughs> so that didn't really work out. So I, you know, I wanted to actually make it count this time. Mm. And I think also when you're paying it, you know, like it was 70 grand. Yeah, that that's a good you know, that's so good, good motivation. Good reason to do it. I got some money back from work, which was yeah. great, and some different um, you know funding and so on. Yep. But um, yeah, made me really want to do it. And just and you're a mature student, so I think you just. <sighs> The difference between having life experience and exactly. work experience and then doing it and being able to go, well, this is what the theory says, but this is what I see played out. Um, this is what I see in this other company and this is where the disconnect is. And mm. you don't have that when it's just all theoretical. Very, yep. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Aaron, can I grab a glass of water, please? Or oh, Tim, thank you. I have a beer, thanks, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Scotch and Coke, thanks, bro. Yeah. Thanks. And, and what are you doing now? Nothing. Nothing. Collecting skateboards. Oh, let's talk about collecting skateboards. So I, uh, actually, uh, basically, um, yeah, I had a big payout after <coughs> finishing with the company and I just, you know, I've always been a person that's been go, go, go and do lots of stuff. You've been with I, them for a long time though, weren't you? Is it 20 years? Yeah, 27 years. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I um, <coughs> yeah, planned on taking three months off. I think it became six months. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the and then became three years and it's, yeah, the, um, thank you. Um, so the the impetus to get back, you know, isn't super strong, but it's it's given me time to sit back and reflect on what's important and what's not. And I think some of the, you know, the, there were some pretty toxic elements of corporate life that I wasn't mm. happy with. From like, you know, my highest value is integrity, and there were lots of things that you see out there in terms of people's behaviour and their competitive, narcissistic mm. behaviour sometimes, mm. and oh. things like that. It's really, 
you know, those real turnoffs. Brutal. So, yeah. Yeah. So I had to reassess and think about what I wanted to do, and um, yeah, it's been a really interesting reflective process. And and I think as well, just from a mental health well-being perspective, like it's just given me a chance just to regroup and you know just to reassess where I'm at in this stage of life. And it's almost like it's been the equivalent of a round the world trip, but I've just stayed put really and mm. did a couple of trips in 2022. But you know, I've just sort of stayed put and and then sort of stumbled into skateboarding and then skateboard collecting this last year and organised. You know, my sister passed away from cancer last year, so mm. I organised a, a benefit concert, a, a tribute concert to her, which yeah. is a benefit. Mm. Um, you know, I have helped wedge with the Moss Foundation mm. and provide some structures and administration mm. support and project management support and so on to help try and you know help to steer that along because he takes it all on yep. um, himself a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my essentially, I've just been applying. I've been myself. You look at my resume. I've been doing that throughout the whole time. I haven't been working the last three years. Mm. It's just that I'm not getting paid for it. So that's not good. Do any uh, well, <laughs> uh, in a way though. But I mean, you're probably getting a lot more of reward and enjoyment out of you know applying it to things that you see help other people and it helps you reassess and... what's important. You know, like yeah. you see the treadmill that we're on as a society, and it's, it's, it's really sad. Like you know, you see people who are just like going hell for leather, nine to five, Monday to Friday. They get to the weekend exhausted. They've got kids. They've got to organise oh, things. Mate, they've got to shit do it all again. It's the worst way um, of living. You know, it's not our, our system is not healthy. So bad. And we don't look after people's mental health. We don't respect, um, yeah. you know, where people are at. And and you, you work in the industry, you would. <laughs> I'm, I'm a victim of it. I've, I've just, I'm on long service leave at the moment. I That's had to right. take four months off because I'm just fucking done. Yeah. I was completely cooked, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't the, the kind of complex young people I'm seeing. Cause I, I like seeing young people. Yep. It's the system with yeah. what I, that I work in and just yeah. what they expect from you. And yeah, the old um, seaweed on, around the leg rope. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just wasn't being probably the best person. I think it took, it took a toll on my physical health as well. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I've been mental for a long time, but I was a bit more mental. Um, so, it, you know, it was really affecting my mood and stuff. So I've just taken time off a bit like yeah. probably what you have, you different do. reasons. You've got to. Yeah. And, and there is things in your life that happen to you that make you have to mm. take time off sometimes Yeah, it's like as a well. catalyst. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got yeah. to listen to it. And the ones that don't are the ones that end up, you know, not around. Well, I've been so I've been having therapy since my so at the end of my marriage, um, you know, I, I needed to reassess where I was at, and you know, like obviously when you have a, a separation, of being together, it's not just one any one person's fault. So there was mm. you know both things on both sides, but I wanted to take responsibility for what I brought to it, and you know, I I managed to find a really great um, therapist in Tassie, mm -hmm. Ariella, who. He's just one of these most incisive people who just gives you these nuggets mm. when you need them yep. to help take you the next step. And uh, I've maintained a, a friendship with her, um, you know, ever since. And so e even like Maria and I, we have, we have um, proactive couples therapy. So from the outset, I said, let's f try and future-proof our relationship. And, and every, so every six weeks we get together mm. with um, a woman in Brunswick who, you know, we just talk out all our stuff mm -hmm. and it's been invaluable. You know, it's all, I, I look at it as though you go to the doctor if you've got like a sprain or a, you know, sickness or whatever, yeah. or, or you need, you know, ma to maintain that physical health. And yet we don't put the same energy in our, into our mental health, mm. which is possibly even That's more important. True. It is worse. Mm. Mental health is worse. And, and people don't really understand like enough around the psychology and why it's important. But um, and they just they just cope or they become trapped by the conditions, the environment from their upbringing and the yeah. things that actually contain them and help them from not or don't help them move forward. So you know, I, I wanted to, as I realised, like there were things things from my upbringing that affected mm. how I was behaving in, in my marriage mm. um, that was just ingrained from my childhood, same way my parents probably did. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to essentially be set free of that and, and take a different course and, mm. and not, not fall into that trap. It's so huge. That's yeah. been massive. It's yeah. huge, huge, huge thing to do. I think have, you having had, uh, we all have families and we all take on different parts of our parents and our upbringing and, you know, we play this stuff out all yeah. the time. Some people are more conscious than others and other people just are Absolutely. clueless and yeah, yeah, they're just yeah, happy yeah, to keep yeah. fucking making tornadoes and you know problems wherever they go. But yeah, totally. it's huge for you to come out of a relationship and go, actually, what 
did I do in, in that? You know, how can yeah. I do better than that? You know, how can I make sense of that? And then try to move forward. So, so your partner, your current partner is in Germany? No, no, she's, she lives in the Mornington Peninsula. Okay, right, okay. Yeah, yeah but she's originally okay. from Germany. Yep, yeah, okay. So, so that's, and you've been together how long? Uh, three years. Three right? years, okay. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. So that's really, it's like, it's, it's preventative kind of stuff doing that relationship. It is. Counseling. It's great that you've got yeah. someone who's open enough to go, yeah, actually, that's not well, a bad idea, you know. Yeah. Well, the thing like, is, you know, we don't have the skills. We don't, like I, you know, I'll put my hand up and say, I didn't have all the tools that I needed during the marriage or, mm. you know, like throughout each of these. It's great to be able to go, you know, I've got this issue. <coughs> I don't understand how do I solve it. Um, you know, and they don't, the good thing, a good therapist won't tell you what to do. They'll actually give you the keys so that yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. you can unlock it. Yeah. They'll give you some insights and some, you know, why, and they'll ask questions. So, um, so you can, yeah, so you can kind of go, oh, yeah, I could do this. And, well, they might offer different scenarios. So, yeah, it's been really, really helpful. Um, yeah, but yeah. also what, I, what I've found from my experience as well is you might have this way of doing something <coughs> and this person might have that way of doing something. Yeah. And they're not bad, but when you put two together, Dynamic. It's it's a whole different thing, and it can go yeah. one way or the other. You can either be water and oil, or you can be, you know, detergent. So, yeah. Mm. And and it's it's amazing. Different personalities, different <coughs> different. Add kids into the mix. You know, you name it, and Work, the road stresses. You think yeah. you know you think the road's going this way, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got four wheel blowouts. You know, like you got no idea what's going on, and until you're actually in that situation, you don't yeah. see it. So if you can have those skills to cope through that, it makes a hell of a difference. You know? It's really helped my uh, the last relationship and, and knowing like that I needed to terminate that because of, you mm. know, it just wasn't healthy and some things happened that I just wasn't prepared to accept. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, you know, and I got that because I was able to stand up after the, you know, eventually stand my ground after the marriage. The, the marriage breakup was the most traumatic experience I've yeah. ever had. You know, when you, it's not just what happens at the moment, it's having your kids every second weekend and, and essentially you, you're diluting this, you know, connection you yeah. have with your kids. Yeah, you're getting and there, if you like never it. the same. I didn't yeah. even have close to that. Yeah. But, you know, I also then I leveraged that in a good way. So I had I had freedom and flexibility to go to America, mm. yep. you know, three times a year or twice a year and spend time travelling there and seeing Kim and, you know, we'd go away together and yeah. you know, have, have a great time. So, yeah, it's... um. Yeah, life, man. It's really, it's really interesting. All but, the twists and turns. Well, and and and, <laughs> and you know, well, this is <laughs> to me like this is one thing. So like the way that I look at life and the way that I've dealt with that kind of stuff and, and all the different things is is like skating in Ringwood, right? The only way you're going to get to skate it good is to know all the kinks and be ready for the stuff that you're not ready for and yeah. how you're going to deal with it and how to deal with stuff on the fly. So you're going to take some slams. Yeah, you're going to take some slams, and yeah. to to get to the end of the goal, you're going to have to, you know, shed some blood. Yeah, you know, and then surfing's the same. You don't get, you know, any sport that's like that. You know, surfing, skating, motorbike riding, any intense individual sport, not a team sport, yeah, but an intense individual sport where you've got to put your life or your body on the line to get the goal, teaches you everything of how to deal with most things in life and you know one of the things i think it teaches you the most is humility if, if you were, if you let it yeah mm. i know if you think about skating <clears throat> like there's no such thing as a perfect run every time yeah like no, no. you're always like the master is the 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 mm. you know the the surface or the park or whatever you're skating yeah you're you're a, a servant being you're a, a guest in that space yep trying to make it happen and not not you know write yourself off and i yeah, think it's yeah. the same with relationships you know you you're in this thing as two individuals yeah. with different needs preferences desires expectations and trying to make it work together in the communication part and how you do that is so important it's a good way to look at it man yeah, yeah. communication is everything but I, I love the ringwood analogy that's a yeah but it is it's so true yeah. because you know you think you're cruising and next minute you've just eaten shit yeah and you're landing on broken glass in the bottom of the bowl that some it's yeah. thrown in there, you know? Yeah. And then you've got a scar for the rest of your life and that's what happens like you do. You walk away with scars mm. and it's a memory. Reminders, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. So that's the thing that I've always found is physical, physical um, hurting yourself physically is one thing yep. and, it, and it definitely hurts, right? But when you've got mental anguish or mental stuff, it, it, it never goes away. The computer's always on at the back. It's, it's, there's never, there's always something, in, no matter how hard you work on something. Like, you know, I've got 
I'm broken up, you're broken up, we're all smashed to bits, right? And we know that, but we can keep going with that. But when there's something in the old computer and it's just going, remember me, remember me, remember me, it's so hard to get rid of that dark cloud. But I think it's about ironing out the kinks, yeah? So if, yeah, you, yeah. if you take the ringwood analogy, yeah. the idea is that you should never have to stay in those negative dark places. That's like, right, yeah. Like we deserve better than, yeah. than that. And it's See, about how do we get the tools and the ability and the keys. Yeah, to pick and, it up and, and the put knowledge. It away. And yeah. how do we, what, what's a safe, you know, psychologically safe place? You know, I remember Stevie G's interview on their side. He talked yeah. about, you know, domestic abuse that mm. he experienced. You've got to be able to remove yourself from those situations yeah. to find safe spaces to reapply, like new, new ways or find ways, <coughs> that, you know, that are safe for you. So yeah. it's. Um, Sometimes yeah. with sometimes with that kind of automatic way of thinking that you're talking about, Richard. Sometimes that's a way, um, it's a way we learn to be because we want to anticipate bad things. Yeah. So we're almost we're always prepared to look out. For yeah, things. yeah, yeah. yeah we're yeah. primed for look for for dangerous things, things to go wrong. Yeah. So then we can prepare ourselves. Yeah. So we're not shocked. So yeah. it so, it, so we see that. Pit that rock in the bowl, or yeah, see yeah. that piece of glass yeah. beforehand. So we're hyper vigilant and we're looking for that stuff. But then that can stop you living so your I'm, life. I'm, I'm an optimist by nature, so I'm the other way. I'm, yeah, you know, I, I look for the silver lining. I'm a pessimist. Oh, and I, and oh, yeah. I, yeah. No, but no, I, I, I do too. I, I always look at. But what I do that I find that helps me the yeah. most is I'm here, but I'm looking at myself from over here all the time. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm watching what I'm up to and where I'm going and. And I always make the best out of the worst situation or mm. make a laugh or it's say a, random shit survival. or whatever. Yeah. And that just keeps you sparking. You're not, you're awesome. not burning out, you know what I mean? Like, that, mean that means you're able to self-reflect. And yeah, you know, yeah. like the opposite of that is someone like a narcissist who can't self-reflect and they can't look in themselves and it's always somebody else's the problem or somebody yeah, yeah, else's yeah, yeah, fault. Yeah. And they're so insecure the old and anxious that they can't yeah, My famous really aim blame. 25% of the problem, 75% of the problem. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so that's the opposite, you know, yeah. situation. And um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, anxiety is a massive, massive problem. Like, yeah. And I think, you know, I don't want to speak um, generally, but my, my experience is that women in particular um, seem to suffer, you know, from the hand of their fathers that, like, that I've observed in different people. Um, not true of everybody, but in, in yeah, some yeah, cases, yeah, and you know the impact that a father can have on a on a on a on a not just a wife, but a, you know on a, a husband as well. Um, you know, like mental health in the family environment um, makes it very that whole complex dynamic really difficult to to navigate. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, it's just so many things going on all the time, and the world, the way the world is, it's just like you know. It's like you say, it's the we're on the rat wheel, and a few people get spat out the side of it. Yeah. And some people are lucky to land on their feet and be able to observe it and go, I'm not getting back into that. And others just get ragdolled. Yeah. You know, and it is, it's full on, mm. you know. And, and, and unfortunately, this, especially, I personally think from the time that we got phones in our hands, like 2006, I think it was with the first iPhones and all that. And ever since that's been right there, this ragdoll effect is getting worse and worse every every time the bloody moon goes around. Yeah, yep. it's unreal. Like, Maybe we switch to vintage skateboard collecting. Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we, so you, so how did you reconnect? I don't know how are we going with time? Ah, oh, fuck time. Fuck. Okay. Um, how did um, we re How did you reconnect with the skating scene? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I remember I came and went down to Noble Park. There's a picture of Noble Park, um, Aaron. And I went down and um, Rich was down there. Because I think oh, social media would have been the catalyst. Radlands, Sackland. Um, that was after Chris Payne's funeral. That's correct. So they actually, oh, sorry, Aaron, there's another picture. Of Chris, Chris Payne's wake. Um, yeah. It's in the skateboarding one. Oh, no, that's actually in the life and stuff. Yeah. Cause um, that's no really relationships it might be. I can't remember, sorry. But yeah, so Matt Davis was there. I only met from when we went up. I haven't told you about the road trip. We haven't talked about car parks yet. Nothing. Go on. We've got to do that. Funny's just sitting there. Can I just... Let's just you can change. just swing wherever you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one thing we need to talk about is car parks from the street sessions, because that was for me... Photo first. That was the highlight. Oh, car parks were hilarious. Man. Uh, we, we would skate car parks. When we skated the streets, right, we would... 
like all the major hotels, like the Sheraton, they had this, the Sheraton up at the end of Coleman Street had this massive circular. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. that? And oh, you'd just be sliding the whole way and would be like chased out by security guards. So you'd have someone up the top on security lookout. You know, you'd, you'd have the strategy. It's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going in there. But the best one, I remember, the best one I remember, we went up that, um, one of the, la- maybe Hardware Lane or one of those mm. lanes up yeah. that way. There was this car park that was always shut. The only way you could get in was if someone was coming out and you quickly grabbed the door and went in yeah. as they were leaving. And that hardly ever happened. And one time there was a scaffold that built in the laneway for doing some work. Yeah, that's we, we right. Oh, the okay. scaffold got that in. so bad. And this car park was incredible. It was smooth and it was raining that day, I think. So it was dry inside. Could we go when it was raining? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Because there was no one coming in or out. And yeah. the city it was, was dead, so there was no cars in the always, car parks. Yes. And this yeah. car park was sick. You get elevated at the top. No. Push your ass off, <laughs> and you go down, it's flat, down, flat, it's just nice. speed the whole way down. And we, we piss ourselves laughing, push each other, nudge each other the yeah, whole way yeah, down, yeah, like, yeah. just like, lock each other off, and it was so funny. And then that just grew. But like, do, you remember, do you remember that one, that car park you're talking about? <clears throat> one time we're skating, and we're coming down a level, and the security guard was waiting over the level as we came down, and he dropped an iron bar on us. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah, that's from the, from the floor above. And it's like, jump, jump, clang, clang. <laughs> oh, that was nuts. It wasn't the only one. There was one on, there was one on Lonsdale Street as well, same thing. And we, we named it the Steel Bar Car Park. <laughs> Good name for it. Like the same way you named Paul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dead Cat Paul. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's still by car park. It's still by car park. See that guy's there. Yeah. yeah, he's there. We're not going into that. No, no. He came back another day. Because you know, <laughs> he, he was all It was funny, and it was epic fun, huh? So much, so fun. much fun. Yeah. Every that weekend, was, was straight whole... into the car parks, and then we'd spend yeah. a few hours doing that, and then go to go to Paran when they had the old like oh the bank snake run bowl thing. Yeah. And, mm. Or go down Collins, not Collins Street. What's it called? Um, St Kilda Road. St Kilda Road had a lot. Yeah, it did. And the city had like Westpac banks. Yeah, Westpac yeah, yeah. banks, yeah. yeah. Something that isn't there anymore. Do you know what we used to do? Yeah, so we used to hang on the back of trams. Yeah. Right? And, and the old green rattlers, and we'd, we'd hang on, and you get so much speed, and all the dust would be flying up. And there was one time we were down in St Kilda Road, and, and Borgie lived in a squat, and, and we were hanging yeah, on the back of a tram, right? And, and <laughs> I'm, 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 I've got one, I'm on my one side, and Poz is on the other at the back, and Poz gets some wobbles, and he flicked his board up, and it went up into the apparatus of the, of the... Into the bottom <laughs> of the tram. Into the bottom of the tram, he is... Quack, 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 as the tram goes down the street. Just going, the tram just goes. <laughs> well, it just he lost the board, gone. Yeah, and I got uh. the end of the story, so I went up to see Poz in his, um, before he moved up, he's moved up to northern New South Wales now. I went up to his place in Bel- um, past Ballarat, and, um, and he said, yeah, I actually Perfect rang the tram really. board the next day, and I said, um, I've lost my skateboard. Um, do you know, is it under this, you know, number 76 tram yeah. or whatever? He said, um, yeah, there's this piece of like urethane that's flat and it basically it had melted the wheels it was so hot oh, yeah. and wow. grinding with the with the, the metal and i <laughs> and, and you know what board it was it was rowan stuff oh really he bought rowan stuff oh really the we're old, on the way to cry and rowan needed some money as in rowan griffin yeah, yeah okay. so, oh, he's so old it was, a, it was an alan, red alan gelfin yeah blue cubics and trails yes. i remember yeah. seeing it and the same price for all the rectors, all the mad rats for 20 bucks. Oh, um, no way. And he wrote it and he got lost under the tram. <laughs> so the same weekend. That's a great That's story. A great story. Yeah. That's so awesome. all that stuff, that, that was just a, it wasn't a typical weekend, but like that stuff happened all the time. So that was pre-street skating, street skating? <clears throat> no, I think it's what happened was... Street. You know, for me, yeah, like, just skating around, yeah. Just yeah, A to B, yeah, yeah. Transport but I think but the Bones Brigade video, the first one was out by then, I think. No, no, not yet. You don't think so? No, 80, 83, we saw the, 83, I think we saw the first one. Yeah. Well, yeah maybe, that, that, would have been, that would have been around that time. Yeah, maybe for me, it. So this is the thing for me with street skating is like, for me, and I, I'm not the first to say this, Lance Mountain, like for me, yeah, made, totally. made street skating look like, fun, look like yeah. I could do this. Yeah. He was doing stuff that I could do when he was a pro. Mm. And so I can write. Right up a grass bank, or mm-hmm. you know, do a do a you know a wall walk or whatever. Well, skating from A to B, but with style and adapting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What's that? So he's come hooking down on the footpath and there's this old granny walking along and he's just come up and done the biggest burt right beside her. No way. Like this and she goes, oh. He'd always do this stuff. And he just He'd always do this stuff. He would. He was. Oh man, it was nuts. It was you 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 were there, it's Tom and Peran. Would just go through a car park and he decides to flick his board up at a Mercedes. Yeah, just, just do random stuff. Random yeah. shit. Yeah. And he's going, yeah. wow, we can't hang out with you anymore, man. It's getting becoming too much. Too random. We're all gonna get arrested because you're doing stupid shit. Yeah. yeah. He mailed it out. Yeah. We had words to him about it. Yeah. And he became kind of, you know, how old would normal have been then? Like, oh, we would have been mm, it's a year younger than me, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well he's yeah, well, how old's plus? He's, he's now he's 57. The man. Oh, he's two years younger. Yeah, he's 57. Okay. He's, so it would have been teens. He's six yeah. of June. Yeah. You know, so it, makes, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. It's the the front, front of your brain isn't yeah. working. Yeah. Decision making not good. But our brains were working. His yeah. wasn't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got you to understand yeah. the background though. Like he had some real challenges. Yeah. To, sure. mm. At home and, yeah. you know, with it, um, some domestic um, violence and yeah. things like that that were going on. Yeah. And that explains his dad and so on. Yeah, and Old Eddie Algura. Yeah, Is but I, so I think the healthy thing about that though, and it's like a band again. It's like you've got all these different characters with extreme personalities, and you know, yeah. like so him and I balanced each other. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I was Papa Bear, and he was like yep. whatever. Yeah, um, you know, like we we balanced each other out, and I think yeah. you know, it's when you get the absence of a a person like that that you need the balance. That's when things go nuts. Yeah, and you know, For too long. he yeah. went to started getting into. You know, like substance abuse and yeah. things like that, and That'll you know, it. and probably it's because the environment changed and it wasn't. Um, but you know, good but also hey. probably self-medicating to try and deal with the stuff he was trying to deal with. Yeah, as well. Of course, you, know. yeah, yeah. you remember one just, time just like we come back from Karai, we pulled into that that road stop thing, and we're getting ice cream. Someone did take a piss or something, and he get he sees like a minivan with a trailer on the back. Oh, and, God, he did. And he's leaving, and he runs. And it's got a net on top of this trailer. He gets on it, <laughs> thinking the guy's gonna stop. The guy didn't see him. Oh, fuck off. So he's onto the freeway. See him, Oz. Oh, that's hilarious. He's just driving on the freeway, possibly. I think we drove next to him, we prepped to step and like flag the guy down to pull over. Some guy on the back of his head like, oh shit, and he pulls over. And possibly, like, just shitting himself on the back of his trail. <laughs> we left him there for a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great story. Uh, we used to play a game at Bayswater because when he had the SAP ramp, I don't yeah. know whether you were there, Dave, but. We used to play this game in the Woolworths car park called Budgie in a Birdcage. And you'd, you'd get in a shopping trolley and you'd push each other down the hill oh, and then just spin it with all your rectors on oh, and stuff. No way. Yeah, you'd be fine, you got rectors you on. Just get yeah. smashed though, you oh. just get so pumped though. Like, it was so much you'd fun. be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be fine. You'd go, you'd go first, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be fine. But, but, How do you do it again? <laughs> yeah, sure. but we're, like, that's what we used to do. Like, we used to do stuff that the average person look at it and go, you guys are nuts. But because oh, yeah. we were skaters, we were it's so just, confident in our bodies. Yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. Like that. Well, it's also, like skating itself is about pushing things yeah. to a, a Beyond, limit. Yeah, next level. And, and working yeah. out what your capabilities are. Jackass, pre jackass. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Risk taking. A little, little, bit, little yeah, yeah. bit of sensibility. I was always more conservative and less of a risk taker as possible as the opposite. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you had your bank job, mate, to go to. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you had to yeah. go to work. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, no, no, I yeah, think Dave, it's, Dave, it's Dave was running big yeah. and Poz was. <laughs> it was Poz. Yeah. That was fun, though, was when you used to run the, the punch on PBS, you had us in there a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What was that, Dave? He, he was like a, a. Radio show. Yep. Radio yeah, on Radio show. Yeah. And he it was like a. Oh, we've got some skateboarders in this this week, you know, mm. it's a bit like us just going in there. And oh, just... you guys would be on the radio, I'll get you on the microphone. Yeah, it was hilarious. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've recorded it somewhere, I've got it on tape. Yeah. Oh, that would yeah, be I'd cool. have it too. It's funny, you're like, you're just doing fake farts and shit, like making noise. <laughs> <laughs> like, just being stupid in your eyes, you're doing your kid. Yeah, it was just hilarious, man. But yeah. just talking about punk. I didn't think, I didn't think, I didn't realise yeah. they were fake. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was like yeah. those intolerance back then. He didn't know. I think so. <laughs> so yeah, there were car parks, and then um, the other. What was the other? Oh, the other cool thing was the trip that m me and Mark and Colin Brown did up the east coast of Australia. So, uh, with Perfect Transition, we wanted to sort of you know make it more national. And mm. um, the first issue was mostly you know Melbourne spots and a little bit of correspondence from friends elsewhere. So we we got on a Greyhound bus up to Sydney <coughs> and we skated like all these places like Manly Corso and um, North Ride. North Ride, yeah, North Pipe. North Ride was actually closed, so we jumped the fence yeah, yeah, yeah. and got the spray cans, the perfect, uh, got a photo of the perfect transition um, 
graffiti like in the, the half pipe with all the you know rubble in the background yeah. and Mark skating it and then um, yeah we saw the hard ons for the first time um, that was 84 uh, wait, 84 man. their first single had just come out so I got to meet and I'm still good friends with mm. them um, yeah so they played um, Connect saw Brett, Brett from Mass Appeal's first band, The Bed Spreads, or Box of Fish, and all these got cool Sydney underground bands, um, and got to meet a lot of people I've been writing yeah. to, so that was cool. And we skated our Tarman, um, or Tarman had this quarter pipe that was really cool, and Matt mm -hmm. Davis, I remember, came out, and John Fox also mm -hmm. got, got to meet him. They were the old, they were the old Manly Rams. Yeah, the blue five. Yeah. Was that the Kiel, yeah. you know, I mean, Kiel, um, is it? Kiel Park. Kiel Park, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So we went to Kiel Park and there was just nothing there. <coughs> um, but no, the Skate City ones. Yeah. The quarter pipes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I never skated yeah. Skate City. Oh, Skate City was wild. Yeah. With these two quarter pipes and a, a half pipe with no flap on it. I mentioned they built a fiberglass bowl. That's yeah. back in 1979. Yeah. We came from New Zealand to come and skate mm. on, one week, on the opening weekend. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and when it closed, um, I met Wedge there. Mm. Back in '79, he was the yep. resident pro at, yep. the, at the park. He was working there, I think. Yeah, yeah. In the and pro then, shop. And, and then when the park closed, it became a water slide park. Okay. I think he hung on for that and stayed yeah. and became like the, the lifeguard. Yeah. But those ramps, the two quarter parts. Got it like a Baywatch thing in my mind now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's the yeah. image yeah. you want to try and get. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty yeah. much it. And, and, the, and those two quarter pipes just got <laughs> sort of put in Sydney. Yeah. At Kell Park, another one um, somewhere else. He wasn't David Hassel off there. He was just Wedgie Hassel. But it was yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we skated La Tarman, skated around, skated the Opera House, oh, wow. which was amazing because, like, back in those days, security was pretty loose. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, we got these rad photos of, like, Colin doing this massive lay, oh, lay oh, back. Oh, actually on the yeah. Opera House? Actually, there's a photo of the Opera House. There we go. So that's oh, Colin wow. on the bank um, skating on Is the right. Is that a bank? Yeah. It's a bank at the Opera House. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's so cool. So it's totally skatable. Good luck And um, we got kicked oh, off. Yeah. By, we got, eventually got kicked off. But we, you know, we're doing like drops off the side there and it was That's great. That's incredible. And we had the place to ourselves. It looks pretty smooth. The, the yeah, yeah, it was. Well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, smoother than the Springy Ditch. <laughs> That's a great picture. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's really, it's really iconic. So that was, 80, that was 85. And then we went up to Brisbane um, and there's a photo of the backyard pool photo. Um, so we got to meet um, Toby, Melanie and mm. Glenn, Glenn Newman. So... Toby did Wild Times um, Skate Mag mm -hmm. just after Perfect Transition, mm -hmm. and um, he's a rad dude. Still, yeah, still rad dude. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And um, yeah, so he took us around all the all the parks on the Gold Coast um, at Labrador, oh, Labrador, Labrador and like, yeah, park parks everywhere. Yeah, heaps the bowls and so on. But we heard it. We caught wind of this backyard pool, mm. and um, I later found out it was actually Tracy Wickham's. Grandparents, Tracy Wickham was an Olympic um, swimmer. Oh, swimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the pool here. Oh, so the pool, actually, wow. there's another photo oh, maybe golly. to pull up, Aaron, that's like me and Colin there as, as we're draining it. So when we rock up, we knock on the door, an old lady um, answers the door and said, Hi, um, we heard that you have a backyard, uh, a swimming pool in your backyard, and we're wondering if, if you wouldn't mind if we could um, ride our skateboards in it. She said, well, we're going away for the weekend, but I guess I could leave the side door open. What the and fuck? And they're like, it's like <laughs> the salivating. It's like, oh my gosh, this is actually going to be a possibility. Hang on, I'll just bait you some scones and I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. And so she said, yeah, you can come in. And so we got in there and it was what? like about that much water yeah. in the deep end. Um, so we had to go off and get a pump to hire it out. We were due to get a Greyhound bus back from Brisbane to yeah. Melbourne the next day. And so we spent every like last minute you know, like we got the, we drained it, we wiped it, and so on. Probably had about three hours just to skate it once it was completely. Well done. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, no photo of you draining it. Oh, okay, that's all right. That's cool. That's a great story. So anyway, yeah. So yeah, we got to skate the backyard pool. That's my the only backyard pool I've ever skated. It's a good one to skate though. Yeah. Oh, it like, was it good? Two wheel carving. That's what'd you call it? What, what actually, name did it have? I buy all that trick. <laughs> I no one. Yeah, you should just wreck the, <laughs> just wreck the story. Come on. <laughs> no, I did make some though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, uh, awesome. Colin, Colin still tells me that I bailed that trick. And here's, here's one like a, foot under, a foot under that you made. So. Oh. <laughs> I was speaking with him the other day. Yeah. Just reminiscing about stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just mindful of the time. Yep. Um, I know we need to wind up soon. Did you want to talk about your collecting quickly? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that when I was collecting, um, I wanted to collect boards I had back in the day. So the only board I actually had... Sounds familiar. Um, ..was this one. <laughs> and I, 
And I held on to this one and used it to move washing machines and fridges throughout the years as I was moving It's a house. familiar story as well, yes. And I was at Riverside a few, well, maybe <coughs> 15 years ago and I had it and this guy said, oh, um, would you like a brand new board for that? If you give me that board, I'll give you a brand new one from my shop. And I thought about it and thought, no, nah, I'll hold on to it. And I had no idea, you know, the penny uh, didn't drop then. Um, but so Steve Douglas... He's um, a kind, generous man, wasn't he? Yeah, Steve Douglas sold me this board. He, he rode for Schmidt Sticks. Oh, sort of that's so cool. toy box. Um, and then, so, oh, we haven't talked about Thrasher either. So I, um, I went, to, I had an interview in Thrasher magazine. Yep. So this, so this is the Thrasher with Metallica on the cover. So that's pretty cool. I just wear the products, I don't actually skate. That's, that's 1986, so there you go. Look at that. Wow, that's cool. Mr. October. Yeah. I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't make that either. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is there a fold out the spread? <laughs> Scratch and sniff. <laughs> Can we edit that out? Sorry. Um, yeah, so, that, so I did I the didn't interview with Thrasher. Just... And in the whole complex, <laughs> so in the complex you've got independent trucks, thunder trucks, um, Thrasher offices all in the same industrial compound as so I got a pair of black, I went I, I watched how they make thunders mm. I got to watch the production line mm, which was cool. fascinating um, yeah and um, got a pair of black thunders and um, yeah a pair of bullets and that's the same setup that I had back in the day and I rode that on a little bit on Roger Stash the other day and anyway so then I I got that board this one was like too much money it was like eight hundred dollars or something mm. it's like this is ridiculous, I can't afford to get all this. So, and then I saw the At least episode. you learned that early on and you're not in debt. Well, I got a lot of reissues. So I thought, oh yeah, that's really cool. I, I had a Red McGill that I skated at Sadlands and, and it's like, yeah, I had a, a reissue, but it's like it just didn't talk to me in the same way. And then I saw an episode of Skate Hoarders, an interview with Steve Caballero mm. and his vintage collection. I thought, oh, that's just the coolest wall. <laughs> that's so good. You know, the yeah. funniest thing about your Lester, yeah. Like what that was worth back when it came out. If you did the, you know, the yeah. index, it'd be Real worth eight hundred bucks now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. it'll hold its money. I'm, yeah. I'm not worried. It'll hold its. Money. No, but I mean, like, you know, they were, were they one hundred and twenty dollars back in the day when back they in were, you know, in yeah. eighty one. And you think about what we we're earning it's then insane. to what you're earning now. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was so devastated with that X track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then, then I had a look on eBay and I saw, looked at some of the boards, and it's like, oh. Oh, they're actually really affordable, like yeah. 50 bucks US or whatever. And so I, so this is skate history lesson time. So I, I've got maybe 60, 60 boards and maybe about, I don't know, 40 or so 70s boards at the moment. Um, so there's, arg there's conjecture over which is actually the first board, but it's commonly believed that this is the first um, skateboard. Mm -hmm. um, that was reduced to, produced as a department store board, so steel wheels. Um, this is from Culver City, California. And the thing about skateboards in the 60s is that there was all roller skating apparatus. All the, all the running gear mm. is, um, is roller skates. Then this is called a bun board by Roller Derby. Um, that's from Litchfield in Chicago. And it's called a bun board because if you fell off, you landed on your butt. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the Rinky Dink, so this was made in Detroit, Michigan, and this was all within a few months of each other. So 1962 yeah. is a timestamp for this. So then in 1965, um, you got the Webcraft with the Footscray. Um, so that was made. That was a coffin manufacturer. Ah. Uh, they're still going. They're up in Ballarat or Bendigo now. Made a fortune. And, um, they, they used yeah. <laughs> offcuts from the coffins to make these full-on. Um, that was my first course. job out of school. Yeah, making, right. made coffins. Yeah, no way. Yeah, really. Yeah. Epic fun. Wow, that's cool. And so then, um, Surface Sam. Right. So this was a 1965 Surface Sam. So this is one of the first ones that were made in the, um, would, would the guys one, Leo's garage. Um, and that's then cool. 1967, you had these models from 1967 with the sticker. And this one here is like rubber a, wheels, right? Yeah, rubber yeah. wheels. Yeah. yeah. This was. Um, Stored in a farm in Cara, in, in some old guy's farm. There's a oh, dozen or really? dozen boards, and and the grandson sold them off, and I got that. Always good the way. Price. This this one here was actually made in Torquay, so this is really cool. That's cool. This is a metal board, and it's got a little stopper on the bottom. Wow, that's all cool. The, all that's the base it. plates are ingrained or Nylon. 
cast within the, the board. That thing's wide. And this had two, yeah. two wheels on the back of it on each side. So when Russ Howell came out to film um, the, what's the movie called again? The Skateboard. No, no, no. Uh, the one that they filmed in Australia. Skateboard was done in America. The, the whatever is machine, the... Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. It'll come, yeah. Yeah, we wedge will yeah, text yeah. it in. Um, yeah, so anyway, so he, he gave the he, prototype dances of this. On, where Dale Smith dances on it, that one. Yeah, he gave it as a time, as a, as a prototype to Russ Howley. He skated on it and said, no, nah, that's, that, that's hopeless. It's too slow. It'll never go anywhere. So he had basically four wheels on the back. Yeah, wow. Two on the front. And the urethane was such bad quality that, um, yeah, it just broke. disintegrated. Yeah, and the paint just chips off. Uh -huh. Got these rubber pads as grip tapes. Was it called Freedom Machine or something? The, something like that. I'll have to look it up. I think it was. It's Russian. Yeah. So that's cool. It does. Look it, does it does. Uh, yeah. But pre the Russian all the grips <laughs> in the wrong place. Anyway, you can't use on the grip on the tail. So, so <laughs> then the thing about skateboarding is you've got like, first of all, you've got all these like collectors' um, reference books. So this is a really cool one, which is just focused on the '60s boards. Yeah. And it's called Surf to Skate. That's a great book. And each one. So if you're trying to work out what how what boards are out there yeah, to look yeah. for on eBay? You just send awesome, this, this is your shopping. You got that this is your, yeah. yeah I've never seen this before. It's pretty cool. Haven't you? This is sixty. It's, it's pretty early, though, huh? It's an early. So it's yeah. So this is like yeah. um, your shopping your shopping list for all the boards you want to get. It's, yeah. It's Val Val there from the sixties. Yeah. Yeah, and there's some amazing boards. Some of the graphics, like this, is the appeal of it. If you look at like yeah. the graphics, like they just look so cool hanging on the wall. They do, don't they? Just yeah. the plain wood and the simple graphic. Yeah. It's and I showed my wife a picture of your collection yeah. the other day and, and like she's like, oh, do you have to hang more skateboards up? But I said, show, showed her your one yeah. and she was like, oh, that looks actually looks pretty cool, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, that's it amazing. Right, yeah. So I took that as a green light to get more skateboards. <laughs> hey, come on. You're welcome. You brought it on yourself. I don't know why. Why this stuff? So there's a photo out? of the wall, actually, or one of the photos of the wall in there, Aaron, and the skateboards. So this this is actually then... Right. Follow through. Then you get into um, a femur. So this is like ad advertisements for skateboards. And this is a 1968 yeah, Women's yeah. Weekly advertisement. You're right, Rich? Yeah, no, it's all right. <laughs> that was a full double barrel stock gun. Okay. Um, so, yeah, 1968 <laughs> Women's sorry. Weekly. tissue. Yeah, sorry. Obviously. And this is, um, yeah, a, a, a dog That's on a cool. skateboard rolling down the road. So this stuff's out there as well available. So, you know, you've got to work out what lane you're going to stay in. <laughs> um, which is which I have fortunately. The joys of um, dust. Oh, thanks. And so then you go back before skateboarding, right? And actually, scooters scooters were the first skateboards. Why in the way? No. Yeah, they were. Right. And so this is this is from 1932. Uh, this is called a scooter skate. And the way they worked is what, that the what, what country is that from? Uh, the US. This is um, Dayton. I think it's deadly, man. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So what you would do is you put your foot in there. Only one. On one, yeah. uh, one, and then you just scoot Pirouette. along with the other, with just the other. Foot. Your That's mental. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't turn. So imagine how many broken ankles they must have. <laughs> pretty amazing. And you know, it's not. There was like <coughs> sixty-five or fifty. That's pretty cool. Uh, Forty-five US. That was. And then you know you're looking around for stuff online, as you do. So have you you sticking to like a 60s, 70s, or maybe even earlier days? 60s, I'm mostly wood, um, yep. but it's, yeah, 60s. When I think of you, I think of wood. Yeah, mostly. Oh, there's the picture. That's amazing. It so, just looks so fucking cool. Yeah, that was, the, that that was when I first started. It's, it's probably about twice, so, two or three times. So you, you've got a bad <clears throat> habit, that's what you're trying to say. It's moved into different rooms. Yeah. It's transformed. It has. Um, so then, then you get these. This is a 1932 um, salesman ad for that scoot, scooter oh, skate that we saw Daddy before. Oh, the scooter of death. Yeah, so that's actually like a little kid oh. uh, on, the, on it, and it gives you an idea that, you know, you sell it, you buy it for 50 cents and sell it for a dollar, so it's like a salesman's Oh, a pyramid scheme of, like, yeah, scooter stuff. Shit. So, yeah, so th those... So this is how skating actually started with these, you know, in the Depression era, like, yeah. you know, the story goes, but you would have roller skates. That would make you very stoked. You'd be more that? depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you sort of step that, up with it. They poor, they could only afford one. And, and you get the really special, <laughs> too, man. you know, you get the really special um, <clears throat> ads in the modern magazine. Oh, look at that gig. Of, of, you know, <laughs> 
some very oh, special. Geez. Who's that guy? Oh, flashy. Well, look at his mate, pants. You know why he could get so high? Because he was lactose intolerant. There you go. <laughs> So there Every you go. Shot, it's oh, very top nice. off. Oh my god. <laughs> so, um, that, nah, yeah. That's a surprise. Thank no, you, Dave. I surprised him. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, and then oh. the same company that made the scooter skate made these ones. So, this oh was, yeah. <laughs> that's even better. So, that's, oh. uh, so this is what's the best angle? Maybe the what about shot. is it, Matt? Oh, I'd rather that. <laughs> so this is cool. So the way this worked Metal. Yeah. is that it had three wheels on the back, right? And this comes off. So you take this off. Oh, that's quite cool. Isn't and you it? take off the. I won't do it now. You so will. We get it. You take that off. You take out that screw. The handlebar comes off, and you've got a skateboard. I thought you were going to say you got three wheels skateboard. Got something to hit people with, but no, it's Man, a, that is <laughs> that's so awesome. That's, that's not. I want to say you died so many times. No wonder. No wonder people back in that day didn't have any gimmicks. teeth. <laughs> so this has nothing to do with surfing, right? No. And it, and this, is, this is made in the Midwest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near a beach. No. no. So this is where skating goes. Origins. Like. Yeah, very cool. This design with the car design, like the, the figures and stuff on top. Yeah. Contours and all that. I love it. Pretty cool. So yeah, I, I just find it fascinating. <laughs> and yeah, that speaks to me way more than... Your stuff yeah. all fits together. It looks quite good. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. It, 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 it tells us the There's a lineage well, oh, yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks great. It's very classy. Yeah. I like what you're collecting. Thanks. Based on the attitude these days, I'm surprised we even survive. Yeah, 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 totally. No, no, it's... Although, mind you, you see the street skaters these days and with no pads and... Oh, mate. Going oh, down even the big ball skaters and... with no pads. No, like, you know, don't know how they see the ball. just tip over, man. It's yeah, so oh, it's And so it's so knowledge. small. I was, you I was can, if you land on that too, you're going to impale yourself. You can't get both feet on there. Like, <laughs> nah. you, have to, you have to be two years old to be able to... And you can't go very fast anyway. You're chattering down the street. Oh, imagine it. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know the... Steel wheels. The, you know also the raddest like thing that I've ever seen of any, in any bowl I've ever seen someone do is when people ride those bloody casters that you get from Bunnings, just the one-wheeled casters and they put them under oh, their the feet. Oh, the dollies? Yeah, and they just ride them. Have you ever seen anyone skate a bowl with them? No. Oh, my God. I saw it at Frankston one day. This guy just rolled up and he's just jumped up in the air and just whacked these things under his shoes and just ridden these two big white wheeled things that have got the ball bearings in the bottom that spin around like that. It's just carving around. Wedge told me that someone rolled wow. into um, the deep end of Brunswick on a golden breed. I also, I'll get that that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's no. nuts. There's two, two young guys. That's twins. fundamental. That's crazy. There's two twins that come down. They ripped. They've just disappeared. I don't know where they've gone. But he ripped on like the tail was that long and that golden breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to meet Hall? Yeah, and he ripped on it. That's crazy. And carved beautifully, like did grinds, even did grinds on it. Young, young crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unreal, isn't it? <clears throat> Dave. Yeah. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and I feel like we haven't given you enough time and we could talk for a lot longer. I think people are probably sick of me. No, no, it's just fascinating. It's such a, such, a, such, an, <laughs> a, such an amazing uh, life story on the yeah. edge of just so many cool things that kind of fit with skating. It's pretty yeah. rich, pardon the yeah, pun. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's That's right. very <laughs> rich. It's, 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 it's not a story you hear all the time. Yeah. You know? So really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, and thanks for being so open. Um, about your stuff sure. as well, which is really good because I think that's something that Aaron um, and I are pretty keen on is people telling yeah. the good, good and the bad yeah. Yeah. sometimes and just how people overcome that. Well, you know, I have two, two themes, I guess, you know, if, if, if you were to ask what, what are the key messages I would want people to hear. I had that on my list. Um, that would be, you know, life is too short um, to hold a grudge and the other one is that life is too short not to work through your shit. Mm. Yep. But you know, otherwise it just holds you back, yep. and yeah. you can't move forward, and it just affects you know everyone in your mm. in your hemisphere. Good yeah. things to live by, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, awesome, Dave. Thanks very much for thanks joining for in, me. Tony, and thanks, Rich. Yeah. For thanks for being here, Dave. Sorry about um, it. Pleasure. Sorry about the big sneeze. Something got up my nose. Yeah, go on now. Yeah. Thanks to Aaron for his tech wizardry and yeah. his and his whole concept of doing their side um, and for pushing with it, and for Tim. Yep. for his wonderful, yeah, boys. Nice yeah, yeah. wonderful sound skills. And yeah. time, yeah, and thanks for letting us in the house, Aaron. It's yep. awesome. Hey, get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody. Oh, I was going to present you with Dave. This is your life. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a book. And warning, <laughs> thanks, mate. Do not write these. Yeah, Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, yeah. See ya.